up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and I'm here with Abzi for the Best Gaming Podcast number 461. We're going to talk about PCs finally getting trophies. Probably the most important update in the history of PCs ever oh. in PC games. Most likely will be a turning point for mankind, the betterment of mankind, the improvement of pretty much everything. I think the moment PC uh, trophies become available, we as a species will turn around. It's oh, really giving yeah. me hope. And as every as game as will be built around platinuming it. Yeah. It'll be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be and I was looking at some platinum lists this morning to talk about this, and it was like, you threw eight people off a cliff. And I was like, well, Jay Reaper when Dragon's Dogma would have got that one. But I don't know <laughs> if I want every game to have that as a yeah. you know as an yeah. achievement. And then we're going to talk about um, gaming getting dirtier. People are probably going to think this is negative. It's at, well, I sort of worded it that way, a little bit negative, but we're going to talk about the different ways games are being delivered now with digital, with early access, early, early access, which was sort of talked about this morning in our Discord. And the idea that more along the lines of murkier, but I tried to use murkier and, and wrote it, and I knew people would be like, that's spelled wrong, even though technically it's I a just word. saw the, I, I so. saw the... The Hades thing, and I was like, "Wow, this is yeah. <laughs> this is yeah. this is insane." It can skew insane. negative or positive depending on the group you're in yeah, and their experiences. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's just the thing. Yeah. yeah, somebody new is going to look at that and might not think anything about it, but somebody who back in the day is like every just everything needs to be like shivering Isles is probably going to be pretty upset by it. Yeah. We're also going to talk about um, gamers getting less or what we think of as less because there's no physical property around it with DLC. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about is something that backs up the discussion we had about sometimes there being a difference between the actor, actress, their physical look on a game and something that CD uh, Project Red just discussed in a recent interview that backs up that mistakes can happen. And I thought it was really interesting. I ha it happened to pop up in my chat this morning and I went and looked and there's a perfect quote for what can happen to adjust, why something can go wrong or look different and um, our reactions to it versus maybe an artist just saying, meh, meh. I don't yeah, know if they can stop and say, meh. But yeah, I mean, I've noticed it. You and I talked about it. Like some people are less um, impacted by it. Others, I notice it because let's say I follow an actor or something, which is going to be what this one's going to be about where you see it and you go, oh, why is that different when this other one's different? And this explains the technical um, elements behind it to the point to where I know that a lot of people think it's on purpose and it can be at times, but that's not what this one's about. This one is actually pretty good information. And then I want to talk a little bit about AI and robots. That'll be at the end. Um, I'm going to cover Dead Island 2, Sola, the DLC. I played that, beat it. I was going to do a review, but I figured, you know what? Those things are so hard to review because you're going over the same stuff for a DLC and to even get eight minutes, 10 minutes out of it, unless I just wanted to bloviate for 31 minutes, I'm not going to do it. So we're bloviate. going to talk about that. Bloviate, which is a good word. It sounds, it's almost onomatopoeia. When you Blase. say it, you're like, yeah, I'm going to bloviate. bloviate. I want to say thanks to everybody who showed up for the podcast. We appreciate it. And lastly, I did figure out or was informed tons of times that the podcast was not updating across almost any other update service other than iTunes and Spotify recently. And I went back and found out that, yes, you are right. I fixed it once. Uh, iHeartRadio was wrong. Google Cast, I think, is gone now. Could be wrong. Uh, CastBox, there's about five or six. Uh, Podbean are all messed up and all have went back to the old podcast uh, that we were trying out. We were trying out a different host. They all reverted back, deleted podcast episodes. So in the last couple of days, uh, I tried to fix that. Hopefully it is actually fixed. I appreciate it. And then lastly, thanks to everybody who sits down, takes your time out of your day. Appreciate anybody joining the patron, the Discord. And if you don't want to, I appreciate just being here. Let's go. So let's talk about the cyberpunk thing. Because I want to talk about this, this, uh, okay. this, this thing. Then we'll talk about what we... Actually, let's do what we've been playing because that might lead into some of this discussion, then we'll jump into the face rigging thing. So what have you been playing this week? Sure. Um, other than Tarkov and Horizon that I already mentioned. A bunch mentioned, of Tarkov. I, yeah, I've seen you on Tarkov a bunch of Tarkov. lot. Tarkov. <laughs> That's very addicting. Uh, you know, it's very, very addicting. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, though, I uh, got into Age of Wonders again, because since I, I, I think I played it for only around like 20, 30 hours uh, on release, and then, you mm -hmm. know, shortly after it came out, other games came out, so it kind of, you know took me away from the game but i love the game it i already called it my favorite forex and it truly is my yeah. favorite forex of all time truly 
Um, and so I just got back into it because a bunch of DLC got added that I haven't touched, I haven't played. So I just like closed my eyes, bought all the DLC, launched the game, and it's just it feels a lot richer. There's more races and more lore, and uh, that's really really cool. I'm actually delving deep and reading stuff and watching the you know the intro to every character I make, and they it's it's almost like their lore is. You know, there's a lot of constants and there's a lot of variables and they procedurally generate or have like a pool of different things because mm. I make a hero and then they give that hero a story, a place in the world, in the lore, which, which, uh, yeah, it's very, very interesting to see. So I've been super into that. What about you? When it, when it, well, real quick, when it comes to Age of Empire or Age of Wonder, <clears throat> do you find your, <clears throat> do you find yourself playing with special races and 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 empires or do you do your own special race and empire and then do you do the generics that the game comes with so are you are you making up four fantastically unique empires to go against or are you doing your own custom empire and then just saying i'll let the game fill out the rest i do both um sometimes i treat it like a I, I, I like to do things in games. I, I, I like to do both things where I kind of create my own thing and just go in with that. But mm -hmm. also I like having the game giving me something and just playing around it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you never know what could happen because you can end up transforming them and doing a lot of crazy shit to the races that they provide. Uh, for now, getting back into it, I chose one of the scenario maps, like with a campaign, and mm -hmm. chose, there's a bunch of heroes to choose from. Even in the campaign, there's just a ton of heroes. And I chose human paladins, which I made angelic now, and they have wings and shit. And usually I don't go for things like paladins and stuff. Um, you know, I, I created a bunch uh, after release, like I made fire uh, dwarves and and uh, bronze orcs and random stuff like that. But now getting back into it, I'm just very excited to see um, all these new expansion races and what I can create with that, you know, different combinations and stuff. Very excited to delve into that and like more and bigger campaigns and make my own map as well. I like, I like doing that too. I've been, so I've been purposely going in and making four or five or maybe sometimes three, make a gigantic terrain and then make three races so that it takes them a while to get together. They can do a little bit of that upgrading before you're getting just absolutely smashed. This last time I played, I turned up all the kingdoms. I took the traits that you can do three traits, I think, or four traits per map. And I chose all the ones that made <clears throat> the side kingdom strong. So they're like mega side kingdoms, ultimately powerful side kingdoms. The but then cities. I only put, yeah, but then I only put three races in there so all the side kingdoms are these like the almost like watching last kingdom uh on netflix or vikings or what have you where the main guys have to try to talk all these other guys who are pretty powerful in their own right to follow them or do their own or, or to to go with them and then i created the most random i mean the most random characters ever i was like you know the goat men i chose i the new the the lizard men yeah. I, cho I chose all the new the the militaristic um steampunk guys i chose them and by the time i got this thing dude it's weird because it made sense in my mind i started telling myself a mental story of like all oh, right so i'm the nature group and i'm fighting against this industrial group over here and this magic group and we're trying to all work out our shit and i don't i have a lot of stuff on where it's okay to win not militarily like, yeah of course there's you yeah. know because that feels that feels good but Every time you switch a mount in that game, when you're making a race, it changes all the stats. And I'm just, every game needs to do it. When you switch a stat to like the spiders and they have the web stuff, you switch to horses, they can gallop farther. You switch to the crocodiles and they can bite people. And you're just like, dude, it's so good, man. If you like fantasy, if you don't like yeah, fantasy, and, it's not going to sell you. <laughs> and there's a bunch of combinations uh, other than, you know, your research tree and where that's going and the stuff, yeah. the, the traits that also change characters. You can have permanent changes. You can have enchantments that also change the look of the characters with the mounts, with the, you know, weapons and other stuff. Uh, that you, like, there's a lot of customizability. If you like, uh, if you like customizability, there's just so much to it, and it's not just you know armor pieces or whatever. Like the yeah. weapons you get, even as a hero, they change your playstyle. It's really really cool. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, it, no, it's great, man. It's I don't know if so. Stellaris has so much DLC that it can be bogged down by just. I mean. The thing about Stellaris is every single side is like a WoW game where mm -hmm. they're all buttons, just like 12, 12, 12. That can get a lot. 
And there's times where I like Age of Wonders because it's still got a ton of complexity, but it's and it dives into. I don't know if you remember this, but the difference between like a lot of these type of games and particular Age of Wonders is it's all nested menus. So if you go in and it says this guy has militant and biting rhino fucking mount, if you hit, uh, I think on a controller, it's holding the double windows button. It'll open up and go into that in the same menu. So your your what you had read is still there, but then a new menu pops up, and you can do nested menus. And it's there's something about not losing the old thing because you might want to go back and then look at something else that still pertains to that last menu where you were in. And instead of having everything go away or it brings it up somewhere else, it's just now it can look a little like you ever had a Windows crash where something goes pop 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 pop, and, yeah, yeah, the, and then it just it, keeps it, going. there are times yeah, where yeah, you're yeah. like, but, yeah, there's a you lot. know there's a lot. You know what but, I love oh, though, so sweet. What I, what I love about it, for example, in Stellaris, it's very complex and deep, but it also looks very complex and and it's yeah. not that easy to to just boot up and play. But right. with Age of Wonders, what they fucking nailed, and I don't think uh, a lot nail it that well. Not even, you know, um, the, the game we like a lot on Game Pass, I forgot, uh, Crusader Kings 3 and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's 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 they it's very deep very complex there's a lot of lot of stuff going on and maybe hearing us you know people would be discouraged to pick it up and play because it just sounds so daunting right but they walk you through it you, even in game after you've done mm -hmm. the tutorial you just see okay this is what i gotta do they put it there for you it's very clear the ui is very clear there's no spreadsheets on spreadsheets you know you can make it that way with the nested stuff but it's still very clear and easy to follow and i really really like that about the game it was so easy to get into it and after yeah when i well. when i was playing Stellaris recently it's like the diff the ability to parse Stellaris and especially it's multiple icons and stuff is very tried and true when it comes to space games like let's show you the 55 chits that mean gold and rice and money and fucking karma and whatever you know there's all these weird things and when you go into Age of Wonders it's pretty I mean there's a couple things up on the top left where I was looking at them yesterday going that's a little messy but overall there were four Versus just, and I love Solaris, but I can admit, or you look at Crusader Kings, which is damn nigh impenetrable. And that game, you just, you look at it and you're all, nothing's happening. And I've clicked 50 buttons. What is going on? Like, how is, is this game playing? Yeah. Or am I, am I paused? So, uh, Jay Reaper, $5 super chat. I like games. Thanks Jay for the super basic, incredibly true comment. Cause you do like games. I've been in discord with you and seen you play 12 and like, you like a 10 all minute the period. games. Like every him and single solar game. <laughs> solar uh, uh, solar sphincter is his user so i'm just gonna say but solar sphincter men him and they'll get into chat and it's like somebody will say a game i want to play that boom 15 minutes later somebody will say a game i want to play that it's just and i'm still playing the same i'm still playing like you know kotor number one these are the people you can't start a divinity playthrough with you know what i mean you, or yeah you or you like know. a Baldur's gate playthrough <laughs> yeah. admittedly they both stuck with dragon's dogma to the point of being pure and well, sand, that's hard to but yeah, yeah, it's a very sticky yeah. game. Yeah, they stuck with that one for sure. But yeah, appreciate it, Jay. Thanks for the super chat. I appreciate you as always bringing the fun into uh, the the voice Discord, man. I I always know where it's going, but I'm always surprised when it goes there. I'm always like, it won't go there today, and it gets there somehow. He always brings it back to the ab absolute guttural, most caveman like discussion, and I appreciate that. Moving on from there and what we played, I played Sola. We'll talk about that in a little bit, and then I've been playing uh, a couple a couple games for review coming up. You can Ooh. guess what those are. So let's talk about this discussion. So Star Wars main character, people were wondering what exactly was going on with the face rig on that, and it looked a little off compared to the actress. This came up with Control, but it didn't come up in many ways with people like Idris Elba in cyberpunk and it, it's come up it, I, I would say keanu reeves is pretty close to keanu reeves you see it a certain way but randomly today i read an article by riley mcleod from aftermath and this is a great article it's called how cyberpunk phantom liberty reshaped cd project red but there's a certain part in here talking about mocap and speaking with Idris Elba, and it says, <clears throat> Idris Elba has a certain way he frowns with his brow. We had to change the face rig of our characters to be able to frown the way he personally frowns. He was really laughing when I told him because we spent hours looking at his face, said Sasko. We couldn't get his eye or lid movement and his frown of his brow. His left lid is slower than his right lid, and it's slightly closed. That means when he blinks, he has the off blink where you sort of have like, tuk -tuk, like mm -hmm. uh, where it doesn't come at the same time. I remember how he looked without it. And you could tell, okay, it's him, but it's just a bit off. 
It was really difficult to tell what was off. If you're not trained in observing that, you're looking at it and you're like, I recognize the person clearly, but something's missing. Those are the tiny things that are incredibly impactful. And dude, it's, this is exactly what was brought up with a lot of these is that a lot of times the face rig is not going to have that much time changed because Idris was the main character chosen early. Keanu Reeves was chosen late and we don't know when the Star Wars character was chosen or control or those kind of things. But it does show that if you're doing a bunch of motion capture, humans' faces are as unique. There's a reason why Idris doesn't look like, you know, you. we haven't, I at least haven't walked down the street and said, hey, Idris. And it's like, I don't know who you're talking about, you know, because human faces are, there's just billions of variations. But it was cool to hear him talking about the difficulties they had, even though they knew exactly who they wanted and they brought him in, they still had to change their face rig. And it makes sense. I'm not talking about the artistic weirdness we see in some games i'm talking about the actual technical stuff because i think that's easier to discuss that was a really good and there's other good stuff in this again it's um riley mcleod from aftermath who wrote this aftermath is the website um really good article on a bunch of stuff about how they changed and adjusted things uh for phantom uh what was it called phantom liberty but i thought that was cool to sort of add some technical elements to it when the discussion is almost always either woke anti-woke doesn't care, cares too much, um, or why not just not mocap it and make a fantasy character? So there, there's all sides of the story. But that was a really good. That was a really good article. Clarified a bunch of stuff that happens, and also when you choose the actor and how it all works. Yeah, Did you also? You, oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say it also makes uh, makes sense for them to go through all that for Idris Elba because I think he, you know, they, they wanted that actor familiarity. Like it yep. was, he was a, so it was a huge uh, part of their marketing for, for the DLC. So, uh, you know, I, I don't think every game should go through all that just to, even exactly. if it was like a no name voice actor, it doesn't matter that much. You know what I mean? But there, I'm sure there are reasons why they, they come out uglier than they are. Like it's, it's probably, I don't know if it's intended or not. Maybe sometimes it's, uh, would it be intended or, I don't know, but but it makes sense for a lot of for it to have a reason, like technical issues or something. Yep. I, I wouldn't think someone wants to make someone look, look uglier, unless you know. I have no idea when it comes to. Well, that. I mean, it's also just awesome actual technical detail versus the consistent discussion where it's the echo, like the echo chamber of it has to be this or it has to be they don't care or what have you. You can see these guys cared at least. But it's also the choice of the actress or actor when they come in too, which I thought was very interesting when they said how they went about with Keanu versus how they went about with Idris. And I do think that in Phantom Liberty, he looks closer than Keanu does to Keanu. I think Keanu looks close, very close. But very there's close. something about Phantom Liberty that when you see... Yeah him you're like whoa mm -hmm. that's a next it's almost like just a next level i would say it's yeah, not saying yeah, one's yeah. bad it's just saying there was an extra little adjustment there that seems like that fidelity helped which is Captured always cool. his mannerisms really well yeah, yeah. i was yeah, like whoa was... i could i couldn't stop thinking about the office because that's where i know it just from the office because that's also like really? i think that's the only other performance where he speaks american maybe he has another oh. stuff too but mm -hmm. but yeah i know him from the that's where i first saw him um but yeah i know his mannerisms were captured very very well and obviously his likeness i would say did you uh capture did you watch him in the wire the the police show no that everybody i still have to about? watch the wire everybody says it's like the best show ever made so i i really want to i haven't watched it i want to watch it as well because lance reddick is also one of my favorite actors of all time so I yeah. should, right? You like him? What else really has like he him, been man. in? I, like, I. It's funny. I don't catch him in a lot of things, man. Just Elba. Yeah, I've seen him in the Wire. Yeah, um, I yeah. I, I don't. I did not see. I don't know what, the show. I don't stuff. know the Office well enough. I don't remember him in the Office at all. Um, but I don't. I didn't watch the Office. I mean, I watched excerpts and occasional episodes. You're talking about the English version of Office or the American version of Office. The right? American version. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, just yeah. making sure yeah. we're talking about the same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Western games definitely have a strange track record of making female models look way less attractive in games. Not just Western. That's the thing. Very easy to assume that, but I know a couple, I know a couple well, well, actors who... when you say who... Western, they, you mean everything, even Europe, and, because, like, you well, know, that is uh, one Control thing, right? was part What's Western of... mean? Yeah, What's Western Finland, mean, right? Because other than that, <laughs> usually when people say Western, they mean not Japanese, right? But... To my knowledge, uh, not a lot of Japanese games do mocap and stuff that much. Exactly. You know, they usually yeah. render their own. Yeah. You know, Did like you anime, see the really interesting bit of, from the developer a couple days ago who said that 
he felt the Japanese developers are going to have and continue to have a harder time catching up to the technical prowess of like this stuff for Western games. It, you know, mm. even a game like you might even look at Atomic Heart or Stalker 2, we haven't seen how that'll look. But that the technical prowess, the engines that they work with, that's not their spe It doesn't appear to be their specialty. And they're still yeah, going with the more play. rendered it's... character. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah, yeah. I'm okay with. But see, that's the thing is I don't want either one to go away at all. Like, can you imagine but how God weird damn, the like... world would be if we split it down the center and just said, all right, we're not doing this. We're just, but... it's all going to be this certain <laughs> style. That would suck balls. But dude, it's just. So playing Horizon and having every single side character, like every single choice of every single side thing be completely mo-capped and look very real. Just thinking about Yakuza and if it had that, because Yakuza, man, like it'd have three layers or like three different types of cutscenes where it's the CGI stuff, which it looks awesome. And you go down to like the story, but not really. And then there's like the side quests. And it's very jarring when you go from... you. You you get pulled back away from it and 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 reminded that it's just a game and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like I know it's a game, but but it's just that consistency isn't there, so it really pulls you out of it, pulls you out of the characters a lot. So just I wish they would I, I wish they would go for that as well. I know it's like a lot of money, but uh, but you know I think it's uh, I think it's awesome. The dogs agree as always, right on time, <laughs> right on time. Every thirty minutes, the dogs are agreeing. Uh, yeah. Tress Brothers, Tressé Brothers. You know what? You guys can correct me on the pronunciation of, of that first name. But um, some of my favorite devs are in our chat right now. I mean, some, th that's the game that I used to always get the name wrong, Star Traders Frontiers. Because to me, it was, such, oh, yeah. it was such a sort Your of like a game. word, 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 but my favorite game. Yeah. Yeah, they made, <laughs> yeah. They made one of my favorite games of all time, man. I've got yeah, that on yeah. every device that's possibly to, ha to have on. It's always installed, man. If, if anybody gets a chance and you like your... Man... Ro not roguelike it's like exploration it's got a mix of dune you know royal families kind That's of like thing a, to it got some got some side dungeon elements darkest Will dungeon elements and stuff like that manager guys yeah 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 dude you did you definitely need to check out their games very cool games um but uh star traders frontiers is my favorite of their titles absolutely Love I mean, it. I love FTL. I love, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff. Any of those game. kind of, yeah, any of those titles. Yeah, so. I, also, I think those kind of games can work better on an Android device or a Windows device, you know, uh, handheld, that kind of Portable, thing. Portable, yeah. Yeah, 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 which I think is awesome because I found myself playing a lot on those. Let's see. Super chat from SBZ member for one month. There's an argument that Ubisoft's engine is bad for mocap, but they managed to mocap Cassandra really well. Oh, see, I don't. That's. Honestly, SBZ, I would say that that is actually a good indicator of why they're not the greatest, because I do not believe. I mean, I believe that's the level that you're going to get from them. It is also a different engine, so be aware of that. It's a completely different engine. So different engines, 100% between the Ubisoft uh, developers. But I don't necessarily think she was mo-capped incredibly well compared to the actress. But I mean, it's still good. Right, but not to the level of like Idris. That that shit was weird. I was like, they dialed that in. But it's a good, yeah. it's a good, it's a uh, good thing to talk about is that different engines can do different things. Thanks for the shout out. Our latest game, Cyber Knights Flashpoint, is coming along super nicely. Yes, yeah, it is, man. I've been following the, I've been following that closely. I I love the ideas of that game. Uh, I yeah, haven't bought the, it yet. I don't usually. Dude, that's really the thing is like I don't even remember how I first found out about. it. I was probably on like an android you know like google store or something and i saw it and i'm not 100 percent into those games very much but then i jumped in and i started diving into like all the different stuff that that game does and it's a little bit of everything and something about mm -hmm. that always excites me especially on an android game because androids or mobile games have a tendency sometimes to just feel like the same repetitive stuff and this one was like oh i'm gonna explore i'm gonna blockade this you know, this planet, I'm going to do this. And it just feels like there's always something that you can jump into and do. Um, <clears throat> Griffin says, I know the person's highly problematic, but Kevin Spacey in Call of Duty Advanced Warfare still looks incredible in regards to how well realized he was on the technical aspect. I would have. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, mean, for the, time, for the time, on, right? Yeah. For the, yeah, time. For the time. It was yeah, CGI though, sure. right? Mostly. No, there was some in-game stuff too. Yeah, there was some cutscene stuff. But I mean, Call of Duty was always ahead. In Call of Duty was always sense. ahead. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. We could also mm -hmm. go FMV like Sewer Shark and just say screw it. And just yeah. straight Dude, up. Have go you FMV. played uh, Not for Broadcast? Yeah. Yeah. The awesome, awesome game where it's yeah. just FMV, but you you control the, the editorial stuff. Yeah. It's really cool. 
I love the games. Five dollar super chat says I love games. We're bringing in the Hell heat yeah. here with the narrative and and really super deep vo uh, super chats, man. <laughs> I love games. I love games. It's probably the deepest super chats we have ever got. Let's see. Especially for the time, they did a pretty good goddamn job with Kevin Spacey. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, I think with Kevin Spacey, if you get Kevin Spacey in your game, you could just worry about audio, but I think that's when you put Kevin Spacey in your game. Because Infinite Warfare had um, the Game of Thrones guy, and they did a pretty okay job with him as well. I can't remember his name. Which Game of Thrones Curly guy? Curly-haired, the dark-haired guy from... Uh, from Game of Thrones. Um, curly hair, one of the sons. Hair. Yeah. Super, super curly, uh, like brunette. One of the main John, characters. Not Jon Snow, John. The, uh, his brother, right? No, no Jon Snow? I think it's Jon. Yeah, I think it's Jon Snow. Okay, okay. Because he was in Infinite Warfare. Yeah, Jon Snow, Bitler says. Thank you. Oh, was he? Mm hmm. That's the one yeah. with the good campaign, right? I've never played mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, yeah. Space campaign where you can choose where to go and what fights to take on. Kit Harrington, Kel says. Thank you, Kit Harrington. Kit That's Harrington. it. All right. All right. So moving on from there. So anyway, if you guys get a chance, check out that article. Moving on from there, Dead Island to Sola. So my review of this is that it is probably some of the best locations you'll ever play in Dead Island 2. It's open. It's this giant festival that you go to that also, the it's not a side story. It merges back into the main story, which I think is fascinating. It'll bring me to another topic I want to talk about, which is when a DLC opens up in a game and why that matters. But it's connected to a main story as well as some side stories. It's a, this giant festival, like basically like Forza Horizon kind of festival or, you know, Coachella or something. But here, the, you know, all the zombies are more useful than the influencers who go to Coachella. They're, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And they're, they're awesome. There's new enemies. There's one called the Whipper who tears their own intestines out and whips you with their intestines like Indiana Jones. Beautiful. But Beautiful. a really creepy version. And... It, dude, it's it's. There's some issues with it. There's times where I don't know if their setup is necessarily correct for a, these large open spaces because sometimes there's it takes a while to get to a zombie, and I can see some people thinking, "Oh, this isn't action packed enough." But they also do what's at festivals. They do the back end of the festival, like where people are moving and working, and then they do the big, uh, what do you call it, like stores and stuff like that, and they put them on these. All, all of these different levels. So you'll go into a place and there'll be, you know, a clothing store, a, a food store, some kind of, it's all based on that influencer Coachella kind of thing of like selling people shit. And then the music's in the background. So you'll go up and you'll be fighting zombies inside of a store that's selling special, you know, shoe, uh, shoes from the festival. And you'll be taking out zombies there, then leap off, run across a huge field where, you know, people have been killed. They're sort of laying down. They come. They jump up to fight. That kind of stuff. The typical things you see in Dead Island too. But, dude, it's actually pretty sweet, man. It's not necessarily the longest. It's like six and a half hours. Well, it's DLC, but six and a half hours, and then it would take you another three or four if you wanted to do all the mini missions, kill all the bad guys. That kind. Of, well, you really can't kill all the bad guys because they're zombies. Did it but just come no, out? It, yeah, it comes out either today or it's out. One of the two. And because I never it, went through the game and beat it, so. Well, and that's the thing. This opens up. Uh, there's a particular mission you do in the main in the main house, and this will bring us to the conversation next, which is the smartness of when you have DLC added into your game when you slot the DLC in, including Phantom Liberty. But when you look at how it's done, you're doing these main quests in the main in the main game, and then this location opens up, and it's either house, which is their other DLC, which is their sadomasochistic like mystery house. DLC that you go into where weird shit's been happening in this house due to the zombies and all that kind of stuff. And then you also have uh, Sola, which opens up, and you can go to this festival and do those missions. It's also got two other weapons. It's got, you know, a baseball bat with a saw blade and a saw blade shooter. They're okay. They're not really why I got into it. The enemies are the good ones. Like, like I said, there's the whipper, but then there's also this blob enemy that as you hit them, they can sort of retreat by melting into liquid and move around the game world and then pop back up. And I thought that was really oh, cool. No. Felt Felt oh, very dear. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. But dude, it also looks amazing. I mean, I would say that this puts any part of Dying Light 2's best looking, not to shame, but it certainly matches it. Because you come out and there's all these cars parked 
and and you know coolers set out like a football games tailgate party and you come down into this field this massive field and it's got one of those entries where you're like oh this is pretty cool and you hear that music blaring and the side story matches it, it merges into the main story which i was quite surprised about it did a good job of mer of merging into the story and making it connected you know how sometimes you play a dlc and you're all how is it that nobody in the main world knows anything about what's going on in this giant place you know because yeah. it's been yeah. added later it's not yeah. necessarily that ingrained, but it's ingrained enough. And yeah, I I, I don't know. They if always it's, had. It's not going to bring you back to Dead Island. Uh, or sorry, it's not going to buy make you buy Dead Island alone. But if you already own it, I think it's well worth playing. What were you saying? Mm -hmm. It's like you, you were saying something. They always had really good level design and a lot of detail in the environments, and I think that's mm -hmm. because you know it's more focused than Dying Light, maybe just because it's a smaller game or a smaller hub based slash level you know smaller levels that, that you go through that the, the, there were a lot of like twists and turns almost dark soulsy right and uh, yeah a little bit this is the more environmental open, storytelling was so it dope. feels different yeah the environmental yeah, yeah. storytelling is really good and here it's good yeah. you'll see you know zombies killed in certain way and there's yeah. some stuff that happens here that actually does further the story so it okay. that's one cool thing is if you go off and do it and come back you actually know more about the story than if you had just it's not that thing where it shuttles you off to an unknown land and you do your thing over there and come back. It actually merges with the main story, which I thought was really That's good. Cool. But yeah, man, it's it's a it's a pretty nice open world area. But again, it won't it won't cause you to you know, that's the thing with DLCs, man. You you really have to have liked the main game. Like a DLC is not gonna pull Can you, you think in. Of a DLC that sells a game other than XCOM two War of the Chosen. Oh. Yeah, XCOM 2 War. Right, that's us. the only one yeah. I can think of. Some people would say Phantom game. Liberty, but I don't agree. I would say their patch mm. is what resold people on Cyberpunk. True, true. That yeah, patch their patch was, was the separate. Thing. Yeah, and people forget yeah, that. Yeah. They think it's a DLC, and it's like, mm-mm. But I would say War of the Chosen. Um, hmm. A DLC that sells on the game. Own. Maybe Far Harbor, or is it not that? Far Harbor is pretty good. You're talking yeah. about Fallout, Fallout 4's DLC, Fallout Far 4. Harbor? Dude, that's yeah, primo. Yeah. yeah, Shivering Isles might get... Uh, Shivering Isles, no, because it separates you off. Yeah, Far Harbor's mm -hmm. pretty... Even though Far Harbor separates you off, it turns it into horror, which is... There's something about it that's just straight up darker. Anybody else? Uh, Witcher 3? He what just says it? Witcher 3. I don't know what he I don't means. Think, I don't think those like DLCs think DLC would DLC cause would... me to magically... Ch I think Witcher 3 strong enough on its own i mean the dlc is right. amazing but i don't think the dlc is the so you know not the main purpose for right. getting the game right now yeah it, it, again it's for the fans and then it might be an added value but it's not necessarily selling mm -hmm. you on the game where you were right war of the chosen is yeah that's that is the game right <laughs> that is the game yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. uh old uh, world pray blues moon crash, was if great. you want to just play a roguelike I yeah guess. pray moon crash just... but that was good that was really but would that good. sell you on the game? I don't know if I, I don't know. It, it does. It doesn't fit in with the Maybe game. Maybe you're right? just like an avid roguelike only player, <laughs> and then yeah. you're like, oh, there's a roguelike. And I mean, Hitman Three. I would, you know, freelancer. Even though it's a free update, you know, you could just play that, and if you feel like that type of game, but because because Hitman Three, if you're playing through the actual levels, it's very defined. I mean, you can do a lot of stuff, but they're all mm -hmm. very defined, and there's patterns. But freelancer is just a complete take off from that is just random and procedural and yeah freelancer could probably you, sell you, you know, use your wits it. yeah i yeah. think it's rare though right it's obviously rare. rare because yeah um uh cheesy d says people say dark souls 2 is bad but dlc is really good if people are saying dark souls 2 is bad i don't know where we are i mean it may not be up to the standards of the that's pretty i mean is dark souls 2 bad the hit or miss for people bad. i feel like Bad, yeah, no. but I mean, but, if it's missed, it doesn't mean it's bad as much. For some yeah, people, but better than the others for other people. By the way, it's weird. It's a weird one. That one. Some people like two the most. I like three yeah. the most, and I I don't know if that's a hot take, but it might be. But I, I really did like three. I like I three the most. Dark Souls. Dark I like Souls one's, three just fit. Uh, I like one's map more and three's mm. gameplay more. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And then I didn't really get a chance to experience much of the Dark Souls DLC. I just being honest, like yeah. it, it's like once you, I've gone through that game, the idea of going back in another 15 hours to hit that 
DLC is not. You know, I I, I really cool. like Souls likes. I even love Demon Souls, but Dark Souls not that much, honestly. Like I like mm. uh, Alden Ring and Sekiro and Bloodborne more, and Neo Two is my favorite out of those. So, um, yeah, Dark. I'm not like the biggest Dark Souls fan, but Demon Souls holds a special place in my heart for sure. I love Demon Souls, even though it's easier than the others and uh, more. You know, the boss fights aren't really. It's more like a puzzle for every boss. For most of the bosses, mm -hmm. I think the atmosphere is probably the best it's been for for Souls games. Bloodborne, uh, the Demon Soul. Oh well, Bloodborne has amazing atmosphere. Probably. Right, that's what I'm asking. Do you think Bloodborne's yeah. technically the better of uh, the two, atmosphere wise? Hmm, yeah, I was comparing Demon Souls to Dark Souls, but Bloodborne. Oh, that's a hard. Oh, that's a hard one. I don't know, man. Maybe people would say Bloodborne for sure because it's a very unique atmosphere. It's a very unique setting um but but fuck man demon souls had amazing and the music in demon souls was really really good it is really nice though if you are a fan of those kind of games and you're tired of going through the game on your ng plus 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 or whatever to get a <laughs> dlc because it is that new location yeah. you know um yeah. and that brings me up so we had a discussion a couple days ago people were, so this is something that luckily enough i've had a chance to talk to a couple random developers about because they always see me talking about dlc and that kind of stuff and the discussion had gone around when it comes in when does dlc get entered into the main game and we see most of the time it's a couple hours in and one of the things i asked when i was talking to him is i was like it are you guys using heat maps and you're basically tr tracking the fall off of a game so let's say a game's 40 hours the general fall off of people not finishing it let's say is 18 hours so do you guys go in at 15 hours and then that's where your DLC goes. And he's like, yep, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. Because it only made sense. It was it, you don't go at the end because you're you're at the tail. But at that part where like you're looking at people, you're looking at your how long somebody's played and you start identifying, oh, they're dropping off and dropping off doesn't mean stopping. It might mean that you can tell their discovery brain parts aren't working as much. They're not going to every single thing you've shined a light on There's, The gamer might be slightly getting back into the main story to just in you know sort of beeline it and be done after their big exploratory stuff and people entering DLC right there makes perfect sense and we've seen it with so many games man so many games and we've complained about it where you're like, oh man it's 12 hours into the game and then you're all yeah it's 12 hours into the game that makes perfect sense like you it know, makes sense from a developer standpoint <laughs> my favorite type of DLC i like the way Bethesda like Fallout games have it where it's just side quests there and you can go mm -hmm. at certain levels sure you have to play a little bit at the start um, sometimes a lot at the start, but I also really like it when they also layer the main game with stuff so that you don't yeah. have to, when you're going back into the main game, you, there's something new there, maybe like an affix or something or, or new loot or, or a new mechanic, a whole new mechanic that just adds so you could replay the actual game. Um, yep. I never go into a DLC and other than maybe Moon Crash, when a DLC comes out, I replay the main game anyway, because you know, Witcher has a has a has an option where it could just start you at the beginning of the DLC with a pre-made character at level 30. But if you start with that, I just feel like that not only is the character not mine, and I don't feel like that attached, I guess, but right. you, you you start with all these skills and 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 gameplay that you haven't played in so long that you're just kind of lost, you know what I mean? So it's a really difficult thing to tackle because you also probably want to make a DLC in the middle toward you know, towards the middle of a of an RPG where you have a lot of things unlocked and things have already been established. So yeah, I, I, I doubt it's really easy to, to decide those things. Yeah. And especially because like, let's say there's a skill trainer in your main game, but because of the way your side game is set up, there's no skill trainer. You want that person to have some skills when they go into the DLC, yes. right? Yeah. Otherwise you're just sort of screwed or you want have, you want to have the ability to, let's say, grind up if you go into the DLC. So it's like, we still have to have giants in let's say Elden Ring. We still have to have, there's something that they have to have. And, have, and this is why Dark Arisen uh, or the new DLC or whatever we get for Dragon's Dogma 2 is going to be very interesting to me because I would say personally, it certainly feels like most people spent a massive amount in the starting area, some part in the ending or in the second area to explore get the new you know get a vocation here or there and do their stuff but ended up still going back to the starting area so i'm i'm wondering what they're looking at if they're going to do dlc for Dra dragon's dogma 2 how where they're gonna you know where's this portal gonna be 
Or where's this giant tower going to be? I did find some secret stuff in Dragon's Dogma 2 that certainly looked like DLC placeholder. There were a couple places that I was all, is that a door that I can't get through because... Yeah, blocked off. Yeah, or yeah, yeah just or certain doors. locations that looked like you could add something here or you could do yeah. something here. When you look at the map, especially viewed out. Middle. One thing I loved about the Dragon's Dogma map, too, is if you zoom in really close, you can still see the entire map. And I thought that was awesome because everybody I know did not know that in our chat. And I was like, if you zoom in, you can still see where all the roads and trails are. It looks black, but when you zoom in, you can still oh, trace yeah, you the... can see little paths. Yes, yes. Right, and yeah, so yeah, when yeah. you're talking to somebody about a shortcut, they're like, oh, I can't see it. And you're like, technically, zoom way in. And if you look, you actually can see those roads. And that's cool because it's more like... It, I, I I don't know. It's better than true fog of war, which is just jet black. You know, I, I sort of mm -hmm. I love that little design. But yeah, DLC it's the same man. Same thing with the. I think Elden Ring did that, where if you have an unexplored territory of the map, if you zoom in, you can actually tell where the map is to pick it up, so it could fill up your map. You can like, uh, but it's very out of. It's very hidden. You really have to kind of look. I still know people that played Dragon's Dogma and just found out yesterday that the pause screen is a clock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think it was one of the guys who might be in chat was like, I opened up the pause screen and I realized, oh, no, it was Denovan. He, he, he was he was playing the game and he re he looked and he's like, wait, the sun has moved. What? And then he looked out and he's like, oh, my God, it's a clock. <laughs> it's a, a clock. Like, yeah. It only makes sense. But it was cool because it was a moment of discovery after 111 hours of a game, even yeah. though technically yeah. maybe you should know it, as in maybe the game should have been clear on some things, but whatever. One of those nice things uh let's see how did the how did um frozen wilds in horizon one open because you played that more recently right do you remember yeah, how that, that one was, unlocked yeah so it was just a side quest you have to be a level 30 to unlock it level 30. i didn't do okay. it until before the last main mission but it was a pretty short game for me because i only mainlined it right but yeah you just go off to the northeast area and then that you know you meet the i think the banuk right yeah. Uh, silences people. And then it just starts off from there. And it's yeah. got a cool side was, story. That yeah, and the it main. changes mm -hmm. depending on where you are. So if you knew certain people, you can ask about them and they get brought up in conversations. And if certain events have ha transpired, like understanding the world, um, more questions arise. And, and, you know, it's very cool. A lot of attention and detail on that. Even with the, I'm noticing that a lot in Forbidden West, where if you've already done stuff, and then quests ask you about them. You can, you know, uh, the dialogue changes. But I really, I really appreciate these little things. Dude, yeah, there's a games. dopamine rush on uh, pleasing your father because he asked you to do something. Yeah. You've already done it. Yeah, exactly. A, straight up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mow the lawn. Mowed it already. And he's like, good boy. And you're like, yeah, dude, yeah. I'm awesome. Yeah. I love going up to somebody and they're like, can you get me 10 skins or whatever? And you're like, I already got them. Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. it feels there's a, it's a mini dopamine rush, but it's a little like, it's a, 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 it's almost like fighting like a little noticed. narrative boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you noticed me. You really, really yeah. noticed me. Um, but uh, yeah, looking at this kind of stuff with DLCs, I'm gonna be interested to see how Atomic Heart handles. I think they have one more DLC. I don't know, but I want to check out the Candyland DLC they have. And I know it didn't rate the best, but Atomic Heart also had weird ratings where I saw a lot of people loving it, and a lot of people just like, "What is this?" I liked it a lot, a lot. Me too. So. I'm hoping we're going to get a, well, it would depend on how the story goes, but I'm hoping we get a sequel to that. Stalker 2, how are they going to handle their DLC? If they're going to have any um, Red, uh, 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 Assassin's Creed Red, how are they going to handle it? Star Wars. Star Wars is, already, we know because the Jabba mission is only available on the higher version, oh, so there's yeah. DLC. And that yeah. DLC is built into the game, so in the future, are they going to say, here's a new planet? And then you know how that times when you like you walk to a spaceport in a game and it's like you can go to Aquila, let's say Starfield or something. You can go to Aquila, you can go to, you know, uh, Neon, blah, blah, blah. Adding another planet there would be weird because it's like that person just suddenly got a note, a PDA saying we can talk about this other planet. I'm hoping these games added into the narrative. Like we discovered a star map or just a little bit. They already have so Tell many me planets bit. they can add stuff to. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Star Nobody Wars, would man. notice. Just look up what planet people visited the least and just... <laughs> yeah, oh, and just add DLC there. to that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go to the heat map and check if people aren't using something. Do we add something yeah. there? Or do we look at it and say, it's a lost cause. Like, maybe it's the travel there is difficult or something. You know, maybe or, there's some little stymied thing. We know how the 
game works, they could do something with that stuff. I don't know if it's a spoiler by now. Is that a spoiler uh, by now? Game? I shouldn't say anything. For Starfield, like kind of the new game plus Oh, yeah, stuff. no, absolutely. That it's still, <laughs> it, well, end game plus, NG plus. We, yeah, it changes things. So, yeah, you could definitely do stuff there. It's pretty, right. yeah, pretty yeah, sweet. Yeah. I, I'm hoping they do because I would like new versions because I got to sit in and see somebody this week or last week. I think I already talked about it, but last week find an NG plus and just be like, are you shitting me? Really? And I want that in every game now. I love the idea yeah. of that kind of NG plus, not just the NG plus and all your weapons are more powerful. It's like, let's change. Let's change up the narrative. But I'm going to read some yeah. super chats. ACG Stalker 2 has like three versions you can pre-order. So it definitely have DLC. Um, right. Well, that doesn't mean it's going to have DLC. I'm not saying it doesn't, but I'm saying I've seen three versions where, you know, yeah, they just give you some pants. Inclusive. Yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. think so either. Yeah. 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 Um, but I appreciate it. I'll check. I, I'm, and, and uh, it's not that I don't agree with you. I just don't know if those are absolutely can, the, um, have to be connected. The Final Fantasy 16 DLC just came out. I just noticed. I know. Yeah. Uh, I Did think you play, I'm going to dive back in. I, I, want, I, want, I haven't, I didn't know until right now. But I, I you know, at some point, I kind of want to do it check it out because i like no, the no. gameplay of that game man i, I, I did I too really but boy i didn't i mean the story was at times pretty good and poignant and then uh, other times it really lows. dropped the ball yeah really that's a when, when you hear it. me talking about issues with final fantasy 14 storytelling it's literally exactly that where they have you super boring dialogue 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 and just exposition and stuff and then a really cool high high moment comes up where it's like whoa and really cool boss fight and you see like the world changing and everything's going crazy and then back down to low 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 that's how final fantasy 14 is and that's how 16 was where you get amazing boss fights and then in between those just the most boring even in the not just the side not i'm not talking about the side quests even within the main story you get mm -hmm. super boring sections um that yeah, they have to that. really look at yeah. uh reading some of these just random chats people say dark souls 2 is bad but dlc is really good old boy says destiny i think he's talking about what uh, games where the dlc helped it yeah D destiny is a weird title to even talk about when it comes to dlc and what they vaulted or not vaulted most <laughs> yeah. uh souls dlc are as good as or better than the base games t monk says i think people more so say that it's a bad souls game but a good game overall I don't, yeah, I mean it's it's probably it's it's probably correct. That's probably a good way of putting it. Dylan says Dark Souls Two was good, but the Scholar version was a noticeable step down. Oh, that's a remastered version. Yeah, I believe. How that happened with one as well, right? Scholar well, of the I'm, First Sin. I thought that was a the first one. Yeah, I I think the Scholar version is a, like a remake. I never played that. A blind Mephisto mm. says, "Glad I'm not the only one." I one K'd the achievements for all three Souls games, but never played any DLC. Uh, Onumiru? Onumiru says Neo feels more like 3D fighting games, though. Different pacing, different style with combos and such. But it's definitely a Dark Souls game. Straight up. Like, that's, it'd it's be very -like. difficult. Yeah. Yeah, Anything with the -like. bonfire mechanic, I just call it, like, that is what makes it Souls-like. By bonfire mechanic, I mean the process of where you can only use XP at the bonfire if you die, enemies yeah, reset. Right. If you bonfire, enemies reset. You gotta go back to your dead body. That is what constitutes a Souls-like, yeah. Kiggs says Diablo 3 expansion made a lot of people buy the game. Which uh, one? Diablo 3's expansion. Oh, yes. That improved what was the that game called? a shit ton. It's the one where they added... Um, not Necromancer. Necromancer was a little thing after that. It's the one where they added Act 5, which is called... Hmm, I don't remember that one. That one was great. And it came with a, with a console release. Reaper of Souls, yeah. That one made the game much, much better. It changed a lot of stuff. It added an end game and stuff, yeah. It was, it was a good one. That's a good example. Parent yeah. says, GTA 4 is one of the only story DLCs that doesn't have RPG elements. G GTA 4 is one of the only story DLCs. GTA 4 mm, is one of damned. the only... Oh, and, he's not uh, saying GTA. Yes, he's t he's not talking about yeah, yeah. GTA Four. Okay, he's no, talking no. about the the two expansions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were just story, play a character. Yeah, is that what you mean? I think that's. I, what I think mean. that's what he means. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, let's see. Sixteen squandered so much in a story and characters. Fitness Mad says, I honestly, feel Final Fantasy Sixteen would have been a better game if they dropped all the open world and made it fully linear and twenty hours long. They could have. They could have. I don't know if the I would consider it a better game, but, but they, they could have. Yeah, they could have because it was definitely lean.
on the side stuff, right? It was. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the hunts were really, really fun, but the the world was just there for you to... You know, travel is good. I like travel in a lot of games, but there has to be... The, the travel has to be its own thing. It has to be... Yep. Uh, even if there's nothing, you know what I mean? Like, it yep. has to mean something, and it just didn't mean anything in that game. Uh, you know what I mean? So, uh, and they're yeah, saying Reaper agree with of you there, Souls is the Diablo expansion. Reaper of Souls. That added stuff. Reaper yeah, of Souls, yeah. 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 I think Bioshock 2 Minerva's Den was a big draw as far as DLC enticing people to play the base game. Bioshock 2's mm. Minerva's Den. That's the one that it, Bioshock just gets smashed, man. You know? Just gets it it gets I love Bioshock up. 2. I know a lot of people don't like it. I know <laughs> a lot of people like it too, but it gets in Minerva's the zeitgeist Den it gets added, smashed. Yeah. I think it was good. It does. Yeah. Minerva's Den, I think it added a lot of uh, lore to 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 the uh to where like big brothers and shit came from, right? Isn't that the one? I don't big remember. Big daddies and big brothers. And... I don't remember. I played the main. Mm -hmm. I, I would say also another game that doesn't have great DLC, but the main games are good is B Batman titles. I felt like the Batman titles did not do great on their DLCs. That's just my own personal opinion. I'm sure somebody will disagree, but like, you know, they'll have I some. Remember. They'll have some side missions for a character or something like that. You'll get, you know, it, it's sort of pseudo DLC. Oh, yeah, play a different character. Yeah, like, what was one of them. You played Catwoman regardless, Dead. right? Catgirl? Cat, Catwoman. Catwoman. Kitty woman, yeah, I think whatever. you played Catgirl. I think you played Deadshot her regardless. But was Deadshot added? Right? I don't know. I feel like their DLC isn't noteworthy enough to remember their But <laughs> I've I, never played a DLC by them, yeah. Yeah, it feels, feels a little odd. Sailor Mercury. Final Fantasy uh, 16 felt too Western for me. It was Western. That's actually West Western, yeah. That's fair. It was Western. It, it it's made for it, it Western was. audiences. It was, yeah. you know. But honestly, I like that writing far more than any other Final Fantasy. I think Final Fantasy writing is not my taste at all. The campy, awkward, weird anime shit, you know, I, I'm not a huge, huge fan of. Like, Final Fantasy VII makes me cringe a lot, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, reading a super chat from Patron, Fruitoid says, what's your favorite martial arts movie, Carrick? And anyone there. Um, favorite martial arts movie. I mean, Enter the Dragon's classic, but I would say favorite martial arts movie. Perfect Weapon or... Dude, did you ever see Red Dragon? Uh, I think it's called Kiss yeah. the Red Dragon. It's with Jet yeah, Li. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Jet yes, Li is like the, uh, the assassin. I was assassin. thinking of Jet Li like just now. Yeah, <laughs> that one was... It yeah. was current enough where he was fighting people that were, you know, normal people. They weren't like all martial arts masters waiting in a temple somewhere, but it still had a lot of the, you know, older style powder flying off a guy's face. I love that, by the way. <laughs> I love that they powder somebody's face so when they hit it, you know, you poo, and you see that impact. That was a good movie overall, and it's the only movie I've ever, ever movie? seen where somebody kicks a eight ball into somebody's head and kills them. <laughs> and I was like, that's what it did. <laughs> yeah. it was that, awesome. that was the movie where it, you remember back before streaming days where where you just flip through channels and every yep. time it was on i would just watch it always flip through and it'd be on somewhere that was back bridget yeah, fonda right not jane yeah bridget fonda was in it and she's like lake placid one of my favorite i mm -hmm. loved her as an actress she was in um the hitman not femme fatale it was the other one where she was a hit gabriel byrne was her handler um and she was an assassin and I I adored her, and she was in that one as the prostitute that he saves. And I, I I just thought Jet Li did a really good job. Jet Li also, though, we were joking about this. Jet Li's a lot like The Rock, or a lot like um, Jackie Cheng, where they or Cheng, where they don't have sexual chemistry with anybody. It do, doesn't work. And it was funny because I was seeing Jet Li in that, and you know he's saving her and stuff, and they sort of are hinting about a relationship. They did the same thing with the other one where he played with the. Uh, the singer who has passed away, Aaliyah, I think is her name, but he did what he did a movie with her, and I think it was him. And there's no sexual chemistry. I've noticed with some actors in the martial arts movies, they sort of instead have a best friend who's a girl. They it, it can't yeah. it doesn't work. It we yeah, were talking, yeah, yeah. La Femme Nikita. Thank you. Yeah. So we La Femme Nikita, I think, is the TV show. I feel like for some reason the movie was something else, but doesn't matter. But yeah, they uh, they they're just friends because the sexual chemistry doesn't work out no matter what you know it's it's always odd like i was joking with the guys last night saying the rock is great in a lot of movies i love just watching movies and stuff like that with him in it but the idea of him banging away big old sweaty the rock banging away in a sex scene creeps me the shit out man i don't need to see that i don't ever want to see it i don't need to see him in those kind of things 
Uh, old boy says, Abzi, curious what makes the difference then? Because Yakuza has a lot of anime moments. I don't know what he's yeah, talking about. Is he I talking about else, Final Fantasy versus? Because I said Final Fantasy is uh, too anime for me. What I mean by that is, um, let's see, how do we break this down? There's a lot of anime tropes. You know, I, I like anime. I watch a lot of anime. Uh, well, well, a lot. I, I just watch the big, like, good ones. Um, but but there are some tropes that I don't really like. For example, the dude protagonist that two girls, like, overly flirt with, you know, but he has to choose one, but he doesn't really because he's, like, really awkward and he doesn't get their sexual advances, but they're always sexually advancing, but they're, like, he he. Right. You know, I don't like that he he bullshit. Um, there's a couple, like, uh, you know, playing adolescent teenagers a lot um it's a lot of pedo shit you know you got a little animal girl that's you know that's like a thousand years old but she looks 15 so it's okay um you know there's a lot of stuff i just don't don't really care for and yakuza while it does have some of these tropey things but mostly like you, it's like the comedic nature of yakuza and sometimes they're making fun of it right but at least you play grown men right and it has a lot of this japanese kind of like over the top you know, boss fight, you know, facing down each other and shit. And I think that that stuff is really cool. Um, I always felt I, I never Yakuza found teases Yakuza it that. versus... They te they do tease it. But they, it, like, okay, Yakuza 3 and 4 got a little bit off the off the rail. 3, not so much, but 4, for example, with the big twists, crazy twists. That was very soap opera. Not too anime, I would say, but very, very soap opera. And that one right. made me go like, okay, dude. You know, but for the most part, Yakuza does not make me cringe like like the others um you know and, and there's stuff where, where you hear where you know a good example of that is the character from persona 5 what's his name or, or eugen or whatever the fuck where he goes like all right that come is on the dude, starfield you know, i don't uh, like that type uh, of cyberpunk character, yeah. group no, <laughs> but i know what you're I'm talking about fan. yeah i'm not a fan yeah so so there are some stuff you know overall i do i do like anime i do like jrpgs you know what i mean but there are just some things that cringe cringe me a lot in I think sometimes we get to in the weeds of even discussing, like, why. I mean, I like a bunch of Western shooters, what have you, but there's some I don't like. And getting too into the weeds is then just like all you're really getting into is you just didn't like it. You know, it's like they're. I, I think the one positive of Yakuza is it teases it so much that then it becomes you're part of te you're part of honestly what i think some of us think when we see it in a normal game where you're like oh yeah. come on that's a little weird so instead yakas is like here's some men in diapers you know and <laughs> you're just like oh funny, dude man. that's how that's <laughs> awesome yeah because it might be yeah, some yeah, yeah. I, I might engage in those games and love them anyway but at the same time i'm like that's a little weird you know and you or you laugh it off on the other hand um there were some weird missions where it wasn't as teasy because it was serious which is the uh uh judgment series where like you're mm -hmm. investigating people for things and those things are almost a harder version of the joking that goes on in yakuza which is why i think i i love them even more you know i, yeah. I like it yeah, but yeah. you could you certainly couldn't say that it doesn't have some of the same tropes it's just how the there's tone like of japanese it. Tone is a big and there's deal. anime tropes you know what i mean true that yeah true that right? there's definitely yeah there's a weird like japanese you know guy girl i don't want to say the word but that kind of ish culture you you might know what i'm saying you know and they have it a lot in their porns and stuff and that's that's kind of more of a japanese thing and i mean it does seep into anime but but there's there's a lot of weird shit you know that they get away with let's just say that <laughs> yeah like for I, sure. I have to like dance around the the exact words yeah um but i think when it comes down to it like back on the dlc front and stuff like that yeah especially yeah. when we're looking at some of these games i don't think there's a lot of games with a dlc causes people to get the game but i do think cyberpunks was a good timing cyberpunk they were like we're gonna do that we're gonna fix the game and make it at least usable and they agreed with a lot of people who had problems with it because they fixed all those problems so it's like even if you liked it day mm -hmm. one i think most people i know who liked it day one still like it better now i could be wrong on that there might be people who like the old skills and stuff i would be surprised that they do but it's yeah. there's probably people out there but there's very few games that do sell the game. And I think probably that one and it's patch, but I think the patch is more important. And then, uh, and then, yeah, War of the Chosen. There's not a lot of them that do that. And back to with martial that, arts movies, mm. we did figure out at his point of no return that I was talking about um, with um, Bridget Fonda. That was, a, that was an awesome one. So here's a new bit, AI discussion. So mm -hmm. 
I don't know if you've seen this, but this will be fast, but Musk has been talking about AI, and and this is something that goes with chip vendors as well. Chip vendors are having issues making chips for video cards, making, you know, because AI has replaced video cards as the most used reason, just like Bitcoin replaced gamers for a while, that kind of stuff. And so they've been talking about the yeah. big thing for the longest period of time has been the chip makers being late um, or not having the supplies, entire ship lines of sh- uh, have, are chip lines have shut down. But Elon Musk recently said the biggest one is energy, a little bit like Bitcoin, where Bitcoin's amount of energy output. And I just want to put it down here. I absolutely think sooner rather than later, if not already via proxy companies, we're going to see the return of a lot of people talking about atomic power. Because it's been a no-no here, like especially in America, where, you know, they're shutting down. We, uh, there's one nation, I can't remember where it is, to the north, where I think they shut all theirs down. But as we get AI, we're going to start seeing like Microsoft hiring companies to go, you know, start telling people, hey, you know what? Your power was out because this, you know, some coal mine shut down or whatever. But if we have atomic power and it reminded me of like a fallout for some reason, I don't know why, but it all came together. I was just That's sitting back was reading. Say, fusion I was, core reactors. Yeah, I was reading the I was reading the stuff about the Fallout TV show and the games and all this stuff. And then this popped up and just randomly when he said it, I was like, oh, shit. I can see him or Microsoft or NVIDIA or AMD on the phones going, let's make a company called like, you know, uh, whatever. I don't know. Make the earth green dot ink. But Vault really Tech. what we're doing is, yeah, Vault Tech. But what we're doing is trying to get atomic power in more places. It's going to be an interesting <laughs> ride, man, because power yeah. is going to be a huge deal. I mean, oh, we're start- sure. like we were already starting to see it become a massive deal around here and stuff. But it was an interesting topic that I saw that he was he popped off on and it mimics what he I bought, felt with he, Bitcoin. He, he, do you think that's going to happen? Do you think do you think uh we're going to try to look at atomic power for for new 100%. solutions? 100%. No, I'm I'm saying that like you can mark my they will for sure happen. Okay. Because right. w- like especially when I you know started studying up on some of the issues with some of the way we do power and how we've slipped away from it, there's going to be all kinds of levy you know like governments or not government, sorry, but political groups that come out of the woodwork that are new. You're like that's new. I haven't heard of them before, but they're they got some good stuff to say about atomic power. We've increased the regulations. By the way, I'm not against it. In fact, I'm actually very pro the idea I'm very of, curious of using to see the, atomic power. The two main ideologies where they would stand on on the, the atomic power. I'm very, very yeah. curious because yeah. you got but the people who don't believe in global warming. AI is trillions of dollars. Don't like the corpo. <laughs> they're gonna want to push that. They're gonna figure out yeah. ways to like get groups. But yeah, it was yeah. interesting. Next up, more interesting trophies coming to Ghost. Sorry, here's a super chat. Oregon, $5. Have you guys seen the new AI music generator? Surprised how good they are. I did. I messed with them this weekend and made songs about people in our Discord. And it is a step beyond what I ever expected AI music to be. Reg DMs me in the insane. middle of the night and he's like, dude, have you seen the new update? And I'm like, yeah, I'm on the website right now. Like, this is Can ridiculous. It, is there AI that masters tracks? Like yeah. a mastering engineer? That's been around for a while where they were well. already using some, you know, little machine learning behind the scenes. But, yeah, you can get VSTs now that are running AIs and stuff like that. Yeah. And you can God copy damn. other masters. So you could say Led Zeppelin has this sound in their masters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, but I, ma- and it would I, adapt I made a song mix. called 90s Hard Rock Epic Guitar, Guitar Solo, um, raging vocals and made a song about our people in the discord and it, it hit vocals every as well it does vocals perfectly no i don't mean <laughs> sure. by the way when you've seen voice actors saying they lack emotion that's done that's gone this is oh, beyond yeah. belief i mean the ones oh, i've seen no. even posted on our discord you're listening going yeah. what the shit i mean they, and it'll get, s- the they get the infl- dude not only that shit. i didn't fill up the song enough with lyrics and it wrote its own lyrics that went with the song so like i said it was a jokey one it was like you know how old 1990s like you know hard rock would be like you know rise up against the power you know raise your swords and i so i just put in the most generic stuff possible but i hadn't filled it all in and the last part it sang a chorus on its own that i had not written and it was it's scary. Okay, let me ask you a question. Here's a here's a little trolley problem question. All right, would you rather? Would you rather an indie kind of you know dude making something very unique with AI, or a big company churning out this formulaic you know top forty shit over and over to make money? 
I don't think there's either or. Do you mean they're both going to continue, like they're right? both extremes. Uh, these are two extremes. Mm. Using AI and making something completely unique or not using AI, but churning out a money-making formula for a catchy song for, you know, fucking Sony or something. I don't think there's one without the other. I, I, I don't see a world where one... I don't... If you're saying, like, somehow we were to cut it and say you can only have one of the two... um. No, not the only one. have one of the two, but so, you know how some people would be like, okay, so AI is uh, is uh, non immoral to make something with AI, for example, right. versus using the same formulaic approach with the lazy writing to make something catchy and just release hit after hit to make a ton of money. So what I I'm I'm wondering if people like what what, what would they see as more moral? You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Because they both are considered. A lesser they, talent than a person learning guitar yeah. for 12 hours a day and then writing yeah. and singing like and, Bieber on a street corner. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, would you it. rather be creative with AI or not be creative at all with, with the, just, uh, you know, with those big company formulas? Yeah. I'm, I'm I don't know. I just know that I that. see a bunch of people who are using beat masters in, in Fruity Loops and VSTs doing, you know, on the beat and all this stuff. And then Loops. they write their, their own yeah loops and then they write their own stuff and i still consider that music so mm -hmm. to me it's beyond my bailiwick like it's beyond it's my it's ability. Good. and here's the thing if i listen to something okay let me mm -hmm. tell you how good this ai music was i caught myself singing it two hours later that to <laughs> me is ridiculous oh, and I, no. I sent it to dev guy and he's like that can't possibly be ai because it can't possibly be and i'm like it is ai go to the website and he went and he made one he's like this is a there's one called um, it's a 1950s, it's sang like a 1950s song from Fallout, and it's called I Shave My Bush and I'm Ready to Go. And okay. it is absolutely what you would expect to hear in a Fallout game. Perfectly. You should check it out. It's pretty scary. Well, there's it's, uh, mods it's the coming out now. You yeah. Add like a million songs to the Pip Boy. <laughs> I love the idea of adding, you know, messing around with friends because I, I like took some of the stuff we joke about with in chat and made good songs. It was pretty cool. Trophies coming to Ghost of Tsushima on PC. This was announced. PlayStation has shown oh, it. Um, so it's just it's not the final step, man. This is like step one of many. Sony's got the service games. They've got PC ports. They're adding trophy support. Yeah, they're they're going to drag their feet launcher. as long as possible to do day and date. I think for their big titles, but mm -hmm. with console gaming having not really grown in totality, it's just switching gen to gen, and people are doing PC and handhelds, and blah blah blah, and blah blah blah, and blah blah blah. I feel like um, it's late. Actually, I expected a little earlier, but Ghost Ghost is a good game to put it in there. I don't care about it, but I think I saw a lot of positive feedback. People were very stoked to have trophies in Ghost, so. There you go. Don't you already have Steam achievements? Okay, cool. You do. You dude, you could I mean there's all kinds of achievements in the different, you know, but why different you, storefronts. Why why would you want PS trophies on PC other than if well, you're a PS owner? It takes right? your profile and it adds it. And and people Yeah, so I'm, I'm so, guessing it's mostly yeah. for PlayStation owners, right? Because if you're just yeah. a PC owner, why would you give a shit? Right. Right. Yeah. My no, thought. you you add your profile, it takes that in. It'll show you a friends list, which is nice. That's something that we definitely need. If you're playing, even if you can't join them in crossplay, I would like to see if somebody is playing it on. Well, it'll be a step forward to crossplay, which is awesome, right? It'll be a step towards it, yeah. Yeah. Sony seems to really not want crossplay as much, but I don't know if that's just them being a little slower to react to. You know, Nintendo's super slow, right? Like they're really slow. I think Sony's a little bit more tentative. They still want to move forward. They'll look, and then Microsoft's the most forward. So it's like, it makes sense. It's just, it makes sense. Ghost is a huge title. We've been waiting for it for a long time. I think it's a perfect title to do trophies. Um, if you care. And like you said, if if you don't have a profile or what have you, my only hope is it doesn't require you to make one. I think that... That's the issue, right? So let and me explain a little problem something. I have with this. Sony's given a pretty bad track record for getting hacked. So the idea mm -hmm. that like my friend who doesn't want a PSN profile, but they're making him make one the same way with any company, by the way, having you make a, pro it's just one more place to get hacked online. It's one more spot that you find making out on I account. Account has been yeah. hacked. Yeah. And so have, forcing you to make one for an arbitrary system, I'm, I'm assuming it won't do that. It, it would be really weird, but 
It's possible. Yeah, it should just be an option if you uh, mm -hmm. link or not link your... You, you can already yeah. link your account in Returnal and stuff like that. Yeah, right. I don't know right. why, but you can. It doesn't do anything. I don't but... know. I just think this is their step forward. <clears throat> Each game will have a little bit more, maybe. Yeah. I'll, yeah I mean, yeah. I'll link mine. It's no big deal, but it doesn't... It doesn't... It doesn't, like, make me excited yeah, as long as it's a I, step I forward to excited. bridging the gap between systems so you can play with others that's all i would care about i i don't really care about trophies yeah i want to see the cross play <clears throat> become a thing yeah. i want to see cross play just and be not just expected. from the game right yeah, yeah yeah just like have it as a system behind yeah so and that you could do it with a lot of games even so when i say cross play because actually that's incorrect <laughs> when i say cross play be a thing it is a thing a lot of times pc and xbox or pc and playstation I want to see PC, Nintendo, and Xbox. Sure, yeah, that's a that's an undertaking. Yeah, it is, but it is. But imagine, I bet you I could sell a friend on a Nintendo Switch ver Switch Two version of a game if I'm playing it on the PC, and I yeah, say we course. can play together, right? You know, yeah, there's that yeah, yeah. because it's just one more game you can join. You, you, you know, if they're like, ah, I don't know if I want it, it's like, well, we're all gonna play today. And you have a play, you have a Nintendo Switch, or you have a, a PlayStation, and now you can play against Xbox, you know, Sea of Thieves, that kind of stuff. People are, dude, gaming's changed. Like the one thing I don't think people understand is, like, especially when you look at how the consoles are sort of the same hardware-wise, especially when they switch to the new chips and away from the custom mm -hmm. shit. We're never gonna see that big jump anymore. I mean, unless Microsoft does switch to ARM and there's some improvements there that we're not expecting. But when you look at it, it's like. The big change could be stuff like this, where finally the change is on the gamer side, not on the tech side. Like, I know you weren't so happy with this gen, I because I remember you guys discussing it, and you were definitely not in the min Console minority. Wise. Console like, wise, exclusive wise, I meant right. Yeah. And I just don't think we are going to see that. I think what we will see is where the features and stuff. It won't be, you know, I don't know if we're going to see those big jumps. Remember, like. Xbox having a hard drive that was mind blowing, mm -hmm. but there's no tech now. At least that we've seen on the horizon, there's no real tech. You got AI chips are in some mm -hmm. CPUs, but I don't AI think there's... chips is the big thing for console right now. It could be if they stuff. use it for something, right? Yeah, yeah. Ray tracing. I, I mean, they still didn't. And I don't know you about know. you, man. I have followed sound for a long time in, in consoles. I can't tell you that I've magically noticed some huge increase on the PlayStation for having their special audio chip or the mm -hmm. huge increase on the Xbox series for having their audio chip. You know what I mean? Like they, it's, mm -hmm. it's more like, oh, it just, su it, it supports more codecs or yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's because it's all fake 3D, you know, or it's pseudo 3D and stuff. We haven't seen those jumps, but I don't know. Maybe there's a tech out there that'll. Do you use uh, the, 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 3D audio for oh, like PlayStation? DTSs or some crazy stuff like oh yeah, um, you mean like that. that that little hear water running in five different ways yeah, in their in their yeah. options I never know with with those options right to enable or disable some games or not only others. that dude but you I'm sure you've done this where it works in one game and you go into another game and you're like what the hell Trash. you know yeah. yeah yeah it's like HDR because a lot of it, the time stereo audio is weird. just way better than their th in built in 3D 3D yeah. stuff. When you have some good, uh, you know, earbuds or headphones, and that's just the mm -hmm. way you play it. And as long as you can get that, just the stereo itself, that's for a lot of people is Binaural more than enough. Binaural audio, which, you know, presents a whole load of its own issues. Yeah, know. binaural audio is good as a YouTube video Yeah, to sit there and hear somebody cut in your hair. They as the knock. original <laughs> demo was, or a knock. But yeah, yeah, yeah. we certainly, there's a lot of faking you can do in normal systems that work quite well. You know, mm -hmm. on their own that mm -hmm. don't need all the big things. But I don't know. People in chat, if you would disagree and you see some um, hardware on the horizon that I'm not thinking of, it would massively change games. I'd like to know what it is. I think for, what do you call it? Uh, handhelds is battery. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to turn your handheld on and not worry about the battery for 10 like hours? The, like the, the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, where it's like, yo... A couple of days you got like 20 something hours with it and then you got the sony one which is like two hours yeah and then the xbox is in the middle um yeah but battery with yeah. all this like crazy shit they add to the controllers for sure would be dude they need the battery game needs to step up in general you know and uh, portables and and controllers and everything dude the rog ally so sells there's a battery pack for it that looks like a baby arm 
and you just slap it on the back. It looks like something I would make, like when I made my mm -hmm. own portable with the fucking huge tablet stuck to the 360 controller. It looked like something I would make, and that's not what I want to see from a professional company. But that's the problem because <laughs> yeah. batteries just have to be bigger to be deeper. Like they, We need to figure out a way to do it. T other five dollar super chat. Really hope they bring more AAA games, which are Steam Epic every time to Xbox PC app, so I can earn Xbox achievements. Steam Chivos are unsatisfying. Hey man, that's a that's a. I joke around a, 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 about ch achievements, but it obviously matters to people somehow, and I don't know. I, I get it. I get it. I'm not going to diss on it. I, I like to tease it, but it's obviously a deal. So. Yeah, I back you up on that. I would like to see it as well. I would Sometimes like to see it as hits. well because you got to be happy for your friends. But sometimes it hits purely due to how it's implemented like the xbox 360 i was addicted to that shit gamer score was all i cared about man so so you, exactly it i think that's a difference trophies matter less to me achievement score is a little like a totality store uh, score yeah i'm a little bit more profile. interested in mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um when it comes to ghost let's talk about the pc version so we get the pc version of ghost coming in looks like my battery is going to go dead We're, we got the uh, pc uh, version of ghost coming in did you see the specs that it requires not horrible uh, i saw the image i didn't really look at it closely is not it, horrible it's not normal, horrible right man. yeah it's yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah. yeah i think the specs are, game. Are, are pretty much what people would hope for anybody in chat if you disagree and you think those specs think are unfair Ghost of Tsushima I think on it's PC. gonna be the best-selling PlayStation game on Absolutely. PC. Absolutely, bar none. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. On P I yeah. do believe that. There's even above. I know Horizon supposedly did well. Other than uh, this last one, you know. Oh, yeah. No, that's the only one. I think yeah. better. Really? You think? I'm, I gonna... think I'm wrong, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna bet it. I think I'm wrong. But Ghost is a different beast, and. I think there are a ton of people who want to replay it, a ton of people who want to play it for the first time, and it offers a different style of open world with the HUD and all that. I Open world sells like... It, it's magic how well they sell. I How many is Helldivers sold, though? Maybe maybe I'm really screwing up here. Helldivers, Helldivers though, is a zeitgeist, but I mean... Yeah, I could be wrong. I think I'm wrong. I think plus that's... Plus multiplayer I, I, and $40. Yeah. But but in terms oh, of single right. player, I, I I literally think because Ghost of Tsushima is the most asked for PC port of, other than Bloodborne. Dude, yeah, other than People Bloodborne, Bloodborne would also, time. dude, imagine Bloodborne this. Sell, like hawkish. Let dude, me tell Bloodborne you how to sell, sell Bloodborne so on the much. PC. Imagine this yeah. magic. You turn on fucking Ghost, and it says new game, options, credits, trailer Bloodborne. for Bloodborne on the PC. <laughs> oh, just a trailer. Shit. Just a trailer. Just a trailer. Imagine. Do you do you know what the world would do? Dude, it would stop. Elon Musk would yeah, be like, uh, we don't need to worry about atomic power. Everyone we would now forget about blood. console wars. People would forget about famine. They'd forget about Africa. You know, it, that would be incredible. About and Israel. It, and I don't even I don't love Bloodborne, but I'm not. A, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can look and go. Yeah. Yeah, that would be. Imagine that. Well, remember when Halo was it Halo that had Crackdown 3's demo or de or or Crackdown 3 that uh, had Halo's? Crackdown had Halo 3 or Halo 3 had Crackdown, one of those. One of the two, right? Had... And it yeah, works, yeah, yeah. man. It works when you're looking for something. Crackdown had Halo 2 or something. Was it? Okay, never mind. Yeah. One of but those. But dude, imagine yeah. that shit. Imagine being like, dude, what? And it just says Bloodborne coming to PC trailer and you hit it and maybe it's just like a dude, momentary they don't do trailer. That, those things I know. anymore, man. Well, that's because some jackass things. reviewer like myself had accidentally leak it or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah leaks right. are, man. That's why you leaks. need a day yeah. one patch. You need a day one instant one patch. And then, okay, so imagine I'm trying to sell their game now. But imagine this. Ghost of Ghost of Shishim is coming out. And there's a day one patch. They tell reviewers there'll be a day one patch. Ah, we're just going to fix some clipping. There's, you know, Jen, we're going to adjust the horse animation a little bit. Nothing big. <laughs> and then you update it. And the first person, you know that Steam, people go to New Zealand or what have you, and they download it, and you'd hear the rumors start up first. Oh my god, there is a trailer for for Bloodborne coming to PC in the credits. And then people would be like, it's AI, it can't be real. And then people post the video, and then Sony, if they're smart, would just not say anything and let that people would be like, Are you kidding? Oh, dude, dude Nixes awesome. is a good port porter. They're yeah, they know what porters. they're doing. Bridges. They know what they're doing. They do a very good Strand. job, man. Yeah, no, they're actually really good. So I would, you know, if, if anybody were, were to make a Bloodborne uh, port, Nixes, Nixes would be would be good for that, right? Yeah. They're NC says it's four years late and full price. That will hurt sales. I haven't seen it hurt them sales before. It's just, 
it's not four years late. It's day one for people who weren't into gaming, too. There is a ton of people that I know that never played the original because they just got PCs. Like, there's luckily people still have sex. There's new new people coming yeah. in. I just don't see and it affecting frame, it that much. It's funny because... Uh, oh, frame rate. Right. But the frame rate issue with Bloodborne, you know people have hacked their mm. PS4 Pros to play yes. on 60 FPS? And it's, fix the, it can be the done. stutter. It can be done. Yeah. 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 can be done easily. Yeah, I just think that'd be... I, I like surprise, man. We don't have enough of it, you know? We don't have yeah. enough surprise. It's surprises ruined. Hi-Fi Rush was like the last Hi-Fi time. Rush was a great... Uh, Microsoft had two or three, actually. They've been pretty good really? about... Yeah, Hi-Fi Rush wasn't the only one. There's been one or two shadow drops they've done that's like available now or whatever, and you're just, whoa. Pentiment, you know? maybe? No, Pentiment was like... No, Pentiment wasn't. I think... Uh, well, I guess you couldn't call... Yeah, no. Maybe they've only had two. Because I know it wasn't only Hi-Fi Rush. Somebody told me there was another one that they had done when I brought up Hi-Fi Rush. I had a dream that because of the Fallout TV show, Obsidian was like, Obsidian was like, uh, announced Fallout New Vegas 2 and just released it. They just released it the same day. I've been itching for Fallout, man. I've just been itching. So you know, that hard. ain't happen. I feel like yeah, something, I feel like there's something there. It's just that ain't going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen, no. Nope. No, and I don't know why, and I don't want to get into it because some yeah. people think it's like personal, blah blah blah, and then you hear, you know, they're working together on. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know where that is. Maybe it's also past the time of where it matters anymore to those people. Some people have left. Some people are there. The idea of <clears throat> revisiting that might not be the director as high from on their Obsidian, ideas. It's definitely. I mean, he's been tweeting pictures and shit of his Fallout New Vegas uh ideas his notebooks where it says fallout new vegas one two and three but it's just three parts of the game if so anybody been, could get him to make it though <laughs> abzi imagine microsoft well bethesda runs bethesda that's the other thing I, and i say that so i have to be honest but imagine bethesda they've got their shit together they're like how much would it cost to just let's put it all aside and let's let's do this but the mega you, fallout game yeah that would yeah like i said man that would be the best day if they brought out in exile and bethesda and, and uh obsidian they brought out some people the godfathers just like the godfathers but it there. couldn't be a remake yeah. i want to i want them to make a new game a yeah, new yeah, thing yeah, for sure. you know no i don't want a remake i want a new it can't be new, new mexico because that's coming out in a demo or in a a, a mod it can't be london because that's in a mod but there's a, many other places you could do uh, yeah, and, yeah. and build on the fallout tv show's success you know uh, for sure. I agree, though, what Sailor's saying. I don't necessarily want a New Vegas 2. I actually agree yeah, with that. Yeah. I want, I want them to setting. make yeah, their own thing, yeah. whatever it may be. Um, for sure. I agree. And you finished the Fallout TV show? Don't worry, people. We're not going to spoil it. I'm just... One last episode, but there was something in this seventh episode that made me go like, okay, I just need to I need to play something. I need to play something. So I've been, I've been debating between either um, uh, doing the tale of two wastelands which is fallout 3 plus new vegas in one game and there's a really cool wubba jack for it that adds a mm, lot of cool awesome. stuff to it mm -hmm. uh which also adds looting animations so you actually see your hand it looks really good you see your hand like looting stuff it's awesome um and then or i'm all i also want to do a vanilla ass fallout 4 new patch and i want to do far harbor so those two are like battling for what I want to play. Uh, if it's Fallout 4, though, I can't play until the new patch comes out, which is, I think, April 28th. So The patch that adds the 60 FPS and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, adds, adds it for the console, for the PC, uh, uh, just it fixes issues that mods have fixed right. for a while. But, <laughs> but it does fix those issues in, in the game. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I might return to it. We'll have to see. I think that game's pretty old looking, though. And it feels pretty it crusty. Is, I was, man. I mean, I was playing Fallout Four a couple, maybe a year ago, and then I played some Fallout Seventy Six. They're they still have pretty crusty shooting, no matter they what. They are, but they're not terrible. There's nothing they're like them, though. Crusty. There's no setting like it. Oh no, there's no, there's just, no setting like it. Uh, yeah, yeah, when you get the itch for it, you just there's nothing else you can play to say it. Yeah. Um. Somebody else was saying. Uh, there was something here that somebody popped and said it dropped. Oh, uh, Steam World, uh, or what is it called? Uh, Steam World Dig. Yeah, the Dig one was a surprise. I guess that recently. Oh yeah, the second one. Popped. Yeah. Yeah. God, that'd be awesome. Uh, Tress Brothers again. I think I'm per Tresse Brothers says I saw someone pitching Fallout New Orleans in a Reddit thread a long time ago that stuck with me as a great potential setting. Great Bayou vibes go nuts with ghouls, oil rigs in the Gulf. Holy shit! Yeah. yeah. See. 
Dude, that right there, that's the thing, man. We all get stuck on the same 15 fucking locations, especially if it's in the West. It's like, and now it'll be Florida for the next couple of years. But the idea of that and Point Lookout is sort of scary. The idea of going into ghoul-controlled locations, all that kind of stuff, that would be awesome. Dude, There's you know a lot what I of want? particular spots you could do. I want so badly for it to just be a sandbox game where, do you know Kenshi? Have you played Kenshi? I do know Kenshi. I've not it? played it. Yeah. I do know I want a lot it like that, that where you just, you can either be a ghoul or, you know, a dude from the Brotherhood or, yeah. or a vault dweller and just live in the world and just do stuff, do what you want to do. Um, maybe have some immersive sim elements in there. But, uh, <laughs> but no, so like no main defined story, just a sandbox and you kind of live out a life and have goals and stuff. I would love that because the world is the main highlight for me, the setting in the world, you know? Yeah, it feels so. like, it, it, I mean, I can say that about a lot of games that it feels like no other, but Fallout certainly does feel a little bit more. I mean, you could say Wasteland now, Wasteland 3, you know, they've yeah, got yeah, an yeah. over arc or overlapping a bit, but yeah, the idea that you would be able to jump in there, it's a cool IP, man. I want to see more be done of it. I would also like to see a Fallout Tactics. I don't mean the cool. 2D one, but like an XCOM. I would yeah. kill for a Fallout XCOM game. With Vats? That, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. yeah, you could do crazy stuff with the different like enemy Fallout types. Fallout 1 and 2. Yeah. Yeah, except those yeah, but those were well except like yeah. an XCOM. Mm. Yeah, except like an XCOM, but I get I get actually sure. get that uh comparison. That actually makes more sense. And then you want to talk about Manor Lords early coverage. Manor Lords is coming out early access on the 20 24th, uh, 26th. Yeah, one of those, but I've been watching I watched uh Lyric uh stream it for for mm -hmm. a while and Damn, it looks really good, man. It looks like the mechanics look very airtight. It looks looks fairly complete. It doesn't look as bare, bo bare bones as I expected it to be. And it just seems like the everything strategy game from city building to, to Age of Empires battles to Forex stuff, diplomacy. And man, like I'm very, very interested. Even in early access, to be honest, I just, I want to see how it, how, it, how it fares. Yeah, very interested in that game. It looks really, really good. Yeah, I think coming out on Xbox Game Pass is a huge bonus for them, too. Because they're coming is out. Is it coming out on Game Pass? It is, yeah. P oh, it might be PC awesome. Game Pass. Sorry, but it's coming out on Game Pass. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. That is really good. They showed that on one of the, you know, coming soon on Game Pass. And that surprised me because I don't remember hearing that that was coming to Game Pass. Um, mm -hmm. So that one, and there's a uh, Harold Halibut came on Game Pass. So Game Pass helps a smaller dev like that, uh, you know, maybe get some cash so that he can do the things we're seeing. And there's a positivity there that, I mean, I know that people may dislike it, but what have you, at least for now, it's working out for some of these people. And I think that that's awesome. Sure. Yeah. I think that's cool for yeah. him. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. There's a lot of those games. So it, it just depends on how feature complete it is, I guess. Cause early access. That's the like thing I'm worried about, about, man. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. It is the most wishlisted game on Steam, so it's going to be, man, it's going to be scrutinized. It's, uh, they've been sort of scrutinized, like you just said, uh, for not putting that it's early access on Steam, which has caused a ton of like negativity because wish people are wishlisting without knowing it's early access. In fact, we just had somebody post where they're like, it's early access. So they just added that yeah, to the Steam page. Did they to the Steam page? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if those wish lists will stop, but I do find that if you're going to do early access, you need to figure out a way to put that it's early access. Should be clear, man. It, it should be very be clear because wish if, and never you can't say wish lists matter and then not be accurate in your post. Like at least your you can't pre-order it, but yeah. Yeah, but the Absolutely. since we do know that, no, what I'm saying is. Well, sure, at least you can't pre-order it. But if we're sitting here and hearing every dev say wish lists are the most important thing, is, aside yeah. from pre-ordering, then you damn well better be really accurate the moment you post your Steam For sure. thing that allows it to be wish listed. Because in a weird way, that's sort of... It's like, oh, does, how many of those might not have been wish listed if they had seen early access and tell? Yeah. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying any. I'm just saying that it seems to me that that's a that's a proper question any gamer should be able even to ask. Even in the it was nowhere, not even in the you know how Steam has a huge uh, early access thing, they didn't even right. mention it in like the description or anything in the game, which I thought um, yeah they should have yeah. done. Yeah. Um, I did get a uh, I did inform them that I was being asked a lot about it about that particular 
uh, thing, and they gave me some information, which is that, you know, they they hadn't put it on because they hadn't decided exactly how to explain it. Um, but, and I get that, but the other stuff was explained. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it feels you really do need to be really, you need to pop off on that pretty quickly. The moment you find out it's early access, you, you pretty much need to pop off. And then I think mm -hmm. the Game Pass thing came later. So those people who might wish list it on Steam are actually going to get it on Game Pass. So there's there's some oddities there, but it happens. Yeah. And Hades yeah, yeah. 2 is early, early access now, right? Okay, this, we got to talk about this, man. What is going on, dude? Because I don't okay. really know what's going on with that one, so, other so, than so, that it's early, early access or something. Yeah, I watched the stream and the devs talked about it. So basically what's happening is that there's, for, I think, uh, I don't know when, the, the, they're calling it technical test, right? Right. I think it comes out now, like soon. Mm -hmm. And basically they're going to have it run. They don't know when, uh, they don't know the duration. It can be anywhere from a week to a month where they want to iron out issues before they release it on early access so that it's like another thing because now early access became a became a little bit more glorified i guess where they want to make sure they don't have glaring issues in early access so now there's an early early access called the technical test is um, it free that is a question I don't know about. I don't know if you have to pre-purchase it or not to have access to the technical test, or if you okay. you just get invited. Um, mm. That's something I have not checked. Well, for the longest time, we've been selling game passes or get what they call battle passes that give you info, give you stuff later. It sure. just makes sense that now they're figuring out ways to, you know. Give you stuff earlier yeah but i i don't really want to do it because i'll get burned out on the game it's not a, a diss on any particular game but the tech test is free that's, just, okay, that's good but that, oh. the, my thing isn't that what i find weird what i find interesting i guess is that early access has become uh kind of a standard now like it has become right. a little bit uplifted like you can't have glaring glaring bugs where the game doesn't work sometimes yeah. stuff because people will will down will uh negative review it to death right so early access now is like a pseudo earlier than release but ironed out i guess it has always been in a way but now there's like a like a thing before it to get to that milestone i just found it very murky i guess how you call it dirty and and weird not dirty in a bad way just kind of messy dirty messy well, yeah. yeah yeah and that's yeah, the thing yeah. is all gaming's so it's almost like history books only go back to a certain point and the rest is some guesswork and future guessing of where we're going to go is pretty solid. And then it goes to guesswork. That's game releases. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the date it might come out full and you know that a DLC will come here and here, but then there might be more stuff. And now the game release is here, but then there's early access and then there's this other stuff, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you got like just... beta tests. Are they beta tests? And then yeah. there's a lot of yeah, we had that with the crew, things, right? Man. Wasn't it Ubisoft? The crew, it stated they did the they did a beta two weeks prior, and we're all they said something like, "Yeah, this is you know, it's a beta," but everybody was all, uh, "How old? You know, <laughs> yeah. how, how much? How much are you going to be adding to the game?" Because I still remember people defending it, being like, "Oh, I'm sure you'll be able to enter, make a crew. That would make no yeah. sense." And then, <laughs> nope, you can't. So. Yeah. What do you think about early access reviews? Like, are they even reviews? Or what, what would you even call those? If a game like Manor Lords has as much as it does, and it, like, let's say it's, it has an end game and all that kind of stuff, then that you could say on this date, which is just like you would in a normal game, because they could patch it the next day. You do your review on a day, say it this date, boom. And that's why a YouTube person who's watching needs to look and go, when was this posted? Boom. If it was six months ago, you better check other stuff because something may have gone wrong, too. Like, you know, for example, if somebody checks out my review of Crew 1, guess what? Crew's not going to be even playable anymore. So no matter what I say about Crew 1 on date, you better check the date because if you go try to buy Crew, you're not even able to. So if, as long as it's pretty full as a game, that's, you know, you just call it early access review. I, I only do a couple, and they're very, um, they're hard to do because... If some games aren't like Manor, Manor Lord seems to have its stuff. That one would probably be like one, two, three. Here's the stuff. But when you start getting into games where entire trees are missing from technology, like in a 4X, what do you really review? I mean, you're just, it's really just uh, impressions of it is of what it may be in the future and what it is now. It's not really, it's not solidified very, very much.
very much. Yeah, even 1.0 so, is at this point, right? Yeah. Where they, yeah, they and it depends on the game. Patches. It depends on the game. Because if a game like that is somewhat fully fleshed out, I have no issue as long as you just call it an early access review. That's fine. I just don't think a lot of people even want to do them that I've talked to. Because when I do mm. talk to somebody about, oh, or I go on a podcast, I, I, like DL, uh, the uh, DLC podcast with Jeff Kanata and Chris, when I went on there, I think it was prior or after. It might even actually have been the DLC prior prior to this one because I've been on two or three times. And we were talking about it inter just internally before the podcast of like, how, how do you, you know, what do you, how do you draw the line when it's early access or when it's something like that? And that's the same way with a wow, it gets an expansion. Does that change? That change the old stuff? Uh, mm -hmm. CD Projekt Red, my review of Cyberpunk is no longer technically very accurate because they've changed the entire skill system. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's like yeah, yeah. it can happen with big games. It just happens uh, in a longer period of time. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's what Call of Duty used to do, betas. A couple weeks before release. No time to make changes, glorified demos. I would say just asking for a demo is good. Or uh, I think demos becoming a thing are awesome. And the more it happens, yeah. the more it's... Like, I Do love you like that. the type of demos that drop you in uh, the middle of the game? No. Or just have the mm. starting intro so you don't have to repeat it? I like this. I, I don't want to repeat it, but I would still rather repeat it than get a character that's just kung fu fighting everybody, kicking ass, and then you start out with a whip. And you know, <laughs> <laughs> okay. that, that kills my okay. soul because I might really like their choice of skills in the middle game that maybe I can't get, or maybe that skill is harder to get, and there's a boss you have to get it from, and you're like, oh, well, if I want to play this demo representation, I have to do these other things that, you know, I'm not really wanting to do. But you are right, man. Repeating yourself sucks. You know, when you go, yeah. oh, you know. You go and you play it, and you're all, all right. And it happened with Stellar Blade, where they're like, yeah, it'll roll forward. And you, I, then you have to rethink, do I really even want to roll forward? Do I want to, you know, what do I want to do? I like sometimes when they do demos that are just, like, not in the actual game. Absolutely. It costs too much, but I something. love that. Yeah. yeah, it costs too much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there were times, though, where you would get a demo that was like, this is not in the game. You know, maybe a fighting like arena or what 15. have you. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, they did really? that. They, the, their demo was was completely different than the game. They had you play in like no a shit. miniature as a mini. Yeah, it was very with a keyblade and it had some like Kingdom Hearts elements to it. It was weird, from what I can remember. Really? That seems. Yeah, yeah that's that's pretty heady, man. You yeah, dude, the like amount of money. Noctis. Yeah. Can you imagine? Oh my god, I now remember Do you that. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That the amount of money that would be is just insane, though. Can you imagine yeah. a, de a a dev? Being like, okay, we're going to create an area that's not in the game with a character that's not in the game or not playable in the game and enemies mm -hmm. that enemies would probably be in well, there. Well, they charged for ground zeros for M MGS, right? So they could, they could always charge you for a demo for a you full can. price game. I think, yeah. well, I, yeah, I think you could charge it. Let's say you, hmm, maybe you can't. I mean, that one. What was Not the as hubbub? As Ground Zeroes. Ground Zeroes was very Ground short. Ground Zeroes was very short. For the yeah, amount of so money, guess... you paid like, what, $40, $50 for it? For a demo? The Ground Zeroes was basically a demo. Oh, let's be real. Ground Zero was, yeah, it was like a prelude, right? Was that yeah, the one yeah, that was yeah. like a prologue? Or it was prelude? one mission. Yeah. yeah. Uh, SBZ says Alone in the Dark's demo is also different. That's great, man. That must cost a lot of money, though. And I don't even... Maybe it's a level that they think they were going to flesh out for the main game and don't. And so yeah, they say, hey, they, let's do it. It's scrapped, it. yeah. I like the idea of it, though, man. I love the idea of jumping into a game, learning some stuff. Starting out is not so bad, but it just depends on the style of game, too. Like, if it's a turn-based game and you have to go through a huge fight, and then you know you have to go through it again, that's why saving the data is good. As long as the demo's not six months. You know, yeah, where you can't yeah, yeah. remember what the shit you're doing, and you go in, you're like, dude, I'm just going to have to redo this. Um, yep. Let's see. Remember, uh, if I remember right, and I could be wrong so people can correct me, I believe Baldur's Gate had some demo conversations that did not appear in the final game. That in the early access, there were some, were there some discussions oh, yeah, and some narrative build. that did not appear in the final game? I think I played a build where some stuff was different. I can't remember clearly... Something in fact, I thought they said that the they game. were doing that. That like there was stuff. Man, I could be wrong on that. I feel like it was Baldur's Gate that did that. There was though. a there was a section. I remember clearly that there was a. I, I thought I was going crazy, but then I I confirmed it because I kept asking my friend about it, and he told me he didn't know. However, I remember clearly there was a section in the ship, the first ship you start out in, which was like a long, big, 
outdoor section that was just not in one point, not in the release. Hey, that's the way to do it, man. Nothing. That, yeah. That's awesome. Um, Cause it was also long winded and you know, I, I didn't like that section that much. So it's good that they cut it, but yeah, right. Testing out the yeah. worst section. So therefore the people who buy it will be really impressed when they get the, they get the new one. Um, Ready or not developer had four terabytes of data stolen, including full source for the game. Oh yeah. 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 So they, the r ransom group, the, you know, the famous one, I forgot their name. Anonymous. They, uh, no, no, it wouldn't no, be no. anonymous. Let me check. The Go ahead. Continue the, the story. Teenager. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's them. Um, they, uh, they basically stole a bunch of data, a bunch of the source code of ready or not. Um, but the ready or not devs did say that no one's personal information, staff, nor players were, were compromised. They, they said that, but a lot of the source code code was, was stolen. Um, but they, I don't think they've been published yet. Void Interactive is who this is. And they right. found uh, console builds for the, so apparently Ready or Not is looking to, is aiming for a console release. Yeah, or, or looking at it maybe in the future. Lizard, yeah. Sailor Mercury asked if it's Lizard who did this hack. Lizard? I, I don't know what they're called, honestly. I, it but didn't, I don't think it was in that, uh, what do you call ones. it? I don't think it was in that story either. I, I, didn't, I just parsed <laughs> they, it quickly. They didn't but... want to mention it. Yeah, and the, and the article, they said we, Game Informer, or whatever the article. Um, oh, didn't want to shine they, any. They don't yeah. want to, yeah, they don't want to say their name. Yeah, but I'm, I'm guessing it's the ones that also did the hack on Sony, right? On the on the Insomniac Dude. ones. Those rounds are. Oh, the, oh man, that yeah, that was yeah, yeah. an insane hack. And then next up, I don't know if you saw this, but Black Myth Wukong's is on the uh, PlayStation Store. Yep. They uploaded it. Yep, yep, yep. We're getting closer, man. We're getting closer to seeing that game. Unreal Engine 5 games coming. Oh, right. Yeah. And then also Witcher 3 Red Kit got a Steam page. So yeah, it's dude. out now, right? The Red Kit is out. Um, let's see. Is actually, that correct? Let's see. Let, uh, let me verify. And that's their version gotta... of Creator Club. Get base, yep, or so Creation gonna... Kit. I'm sorry, Creator Club. Yeah, there's That's already a lot of hate. good mods for the game, but it's mostly like vanilla plus mods, like just mods to a bit better QOL, better visuals. But this is just people are going to make their own content now, which is very always interest, uh, excited for. Uh, but they it still says planned release date 2024. Okay. Um, for you the can red add it kit. to your wish list, but uh, you can't. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm excited I don't think to see Witcher 3 interests me too much playing mods in it because, um, well, I don't mean it that way. Uh, I want to see the mods because Witcher 3's yeah. mods would have to really like change the way you've battled or change where enemies are or added enemies to, for me to get. I feel I, I got a classic play of Witcher 3. Yeah. Also, if you were to do quests, I mean, the you know, the characters are predefined. Geralt has a voice actor. I mean, uh, but Geralt's voice actor, Dane Cook or not Dane Cook. What's Dane his name? Cook. Dan Cockle. Dude, Dan Cockle. Amazing <laughs> mess up. That was right. That was up there with me saying Keanu Reeves Dane and Johnny Cook. Depp. That was yeah. amazing. Anyway, <laughs> Daniel anyway. Cockle, I think his mm -hmm. name is. He, I, I feel like he would be down to, to to voice some mods and stuff. He's a pretty laid back guy. You know, always talking to the community and shit. D Dane Cook is now. That's all that's <laughs> going to be in my head. Yeah, as Geralt, <laughs> man, dude, that would yeah. be awesome. Yeah, I, I with Witcher, the one nice thing is even today, it doesn't look necessarily super current, but it looks pretty current. It looks pretty good. So a lot of the uh, modders, they'll be able to work with the assets that are already there without having to, you know, you don't have to, if you don't want to create a bunch of new textures and stuff, they're pretty good in the game. The game yeah. looks good. And then also you have all those other characters from the DLC. So it's like, what could you do if you use that as your package? You know, if you, you, if you said, okay, if you want to do this mod, you have to have all these. Can you merge them in to make, you know, because could you go into the DLC and then come back out in Heart of Stone yes. and stuff? So they've already yeah. got that. So that means if you if you got it, you've got the whatever creatures are different in Heart of Stone. You can bring them into the original or what have you. Like all that kind of stuff is awesome. More of those characters, whatever the characters. Yeah, yeah, you have improve some combat and stuff like that. That's awesome, man. That's yeah, awesome. That's really cool. I, it's, it's a game that feels so late for the mod kit, though. Man. It does, How old right? is that game? I mean, How old yeah, is that Yeah, I mean, they game? did come out with the remaster thing that was okay. I don't think it did that much of a difference. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. that The show wasn't that good. Fallout needs something, dude, other than that patch, dude. They they need something, man. They need... They just... Shadow drop fucking... Like, <laughs> just you mean they man. need... Well, I mean, what... 
what do they need? Like what, a new what, Fallout game, dude. Just give me oh, a new right. Fallout game. Yeah, see, I think we all get that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, like I guess seventy six has stuff going, but I mean, everybody, a lot of people are just itching for Fallout. So Have you Fallout seventy six is yeah. I did, but even uh, this is one thing I want to point out. It's obviously impacted, but shitty shows have impacted games too. It, it's it's it sort of it's getting blown to that now. We're at this monolithic, like you know, pretty soon Elon Musk is well, his cars already look a little like something from Fallout, but. You know, you get that stupid where it, everything is the best thing we've ever seen kind of stuff. So I sort of pull back from it. It's good that it's doing well. I don't think that they can make too many changes just because the show's doing well, like, you know, in their game development process. But they're not stupid. And Todd multiple times has talked about how he'd be 90 when some of these games come out that people want. So it seems like they're looking for it. I just don't know, man. I mean, that t it takes a lot of people to make an open world game now. I mean, dude, we're seeing teams 300, 400. 400. Yeah, he I does. Know yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Fallout 76, I do just straight up have to say, like, mm. it is improved a thousand million fold. It really is yeah, genuinely. I've been hearing a lot. Uh, yeah, I played it. it. I did it on I did it on cloud, which was actually, weirdly enough, one of the best experiences on Xbox Cloud I've had because I'm not really high on their latency and some of the other stuff. But the PC uh, GeForce Now version was good. It was really good. You you Stepped didn't like uh, seventy six even after the patch. Do you like it now, or do you are you enjoying it? Yeah, I mean, it feels like seven. It feels like Fallout Five during the combat sections. It's it's uh, it's narrative isn't really there, and I liked the narrative in four and five, and New Vegas and three. Sorry, I said five. I meant <laughs> uh, I meant New Vegas and three and four. I like yeah, yeah. more of the story stuff that goes on in those than I do New Vegas. New Vegas, it's a little tacked on, but it is what it is. Yeah, it's it's enjoyable. I mean, for, and for people who like those games, it seems like it has made, you know, amazing strides that I wouldn't even be able to comprehend unless I really jumped in. I don't feel, I'm not really an expert in that, where it is anymore. It was pretty rough when it first came out, though. It was pretty bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, and now man. it's made it, huge improvements. Tammy says... ESO 6 is going to probably take first priority. No, it for sure will. I think that's what we're trying mm. to figure out is, you know, how many people would it take to make a new one? And, and unfortunately, a ton. And more than Bethesda has. Quinn says, what's the end game for Fallout 76? Do people build settlements or something? Is it more about gear? Yeah, people build huge settlements. There's And they've oh, got I a story so in it now. Yeah, world bosses. They have, like, a lot of events and stuff you go to and, and, and do a bunch of shit, farm currencies, whatever. They have a lot of... They have very good end game stuff from what i've heard and they have and one very, of the best communities fights. right i yeah. always hear stuff about the community being incredible yeah they're they're very helpful apparently like you go in and they just want more players to to join them pickle pounder posted pickle pounder pickle pounder posted the boston dynamics a uh, atlas robot getting up did you see that thing that thing's crazy <laughs> let me see let me look at it Boston Dynamics is always messing around with robots, and this one basically is laying on the ground and then picks itself up by curling its own and legs then they over itself. So. Back down, I feel. Bad yeah, for dude, when the, they do the, that. the trying to just train AI on hating humans. Oh, that's demonic. Yeah, where it curls back, you see that where it that curls its own legs demonic. over itself and stands up. That is uncomfortable. Or it's the oh, best yeah. thing ever. Depends on. It. <laughs> that I, is think some I, I think it's creepy looking. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it's Japanese yeah. horror looking. And then what else do we have for small stuff? Let's see, EA Iron Man game. What's that about? Oh, right. That was that was actually something that we've heard about. Yeah, what would you... Because, man, we have, you know, Traversal and Spider-Man is really, really fun. Uh, it's like the, the best thing about it. Do you, do, what would Iron Man... Would an Iron Man game be fun? What would you do with it? I mean, mm. I guess Anthem was fun, but like with Iron Man is just you shooty shoot, throw rockets. There's not much acrobatic stuff to it. Yeah. Would it be fun just flying around and shooting shit? Like, what do, Dude, what do you Dude, I don't want know because every flying game limits your gas on, on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and even in the movies, yeah. you always have Broken Arrow or what the fuck his name is, Jeremy Renner, going like, come down here and fight me or having somebody launch him up to fight them because he can't fly and Scarlett yeah. Johansson being useless. Mm -hmm. So when you have an Iron Man who's flying around, how do you, like, yeah, how do you, uh, yeah, how do you, I mean, Batman flew a lot. He glides a lot, but he flew a lot. He glides, but, but he just didn't have head, air like enemies very often. Yeah. You know, an Iron Man would probably have drones and shit to be fighting. I don't know how oh, you yeah. do that. It, it's a little would, like would Superman. Would it be like a third-person shooter, do you think? Or would it be like an auto-lock combo dodgy thing? 
Oh, I think it'd be about the upgrades. They'd figure out some way to make it so that one upgrade has lock on, one doesn't, but it does more power. Mm. You know, it's like Armored Core. You know, like very acrobatic with shooty shoots. Where he and goes to other places and blows them up because he can't fight in New York because he'd kill everybody. You could do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Or you just blow up New York anyway. Yeah, see, Marvel's, I mean, they're always showing people cleaning up. I mean, even the last movie, whatever one of the last movies was, was, where they had, you know, everybody attacking them because they had destroyed that one town. There's that moral dilemma of superheroes mm -hmm. killing everybody. Unless you're Arrow. Just doesn't give a shit. They, they should just make, they should make like high, high customizability in the. So the here's gear, the thing, you know man. I mean? Robert Downey Jr. is pretty, he's not super high on tech, but he knows a lot about it and he knows what's going on. Okay. He knows it, it would be stunning if they got him to do the voice. I would be, that would be yeah. amazing. We haven't seen games that took the actors from the movies, right? They're, they're always different. Yeah, a lot of times. Because it yeah. costs so much, I'm assuming. I don't know, Robert probably. Downey Jr., you think if you down? sold him on the story, you could probably get him to do it for a good price. If you somehow were like, listen, this is the future. Look at Uncharted, you know? Look at how, look at The Last of Us. This is what you could do with Iron Man. Maybe, who knows? Maybe he would. Because he, yeah. I think his big thing is the physicality of it. He's He says he's old. You know, he feels he feels too old to sort of do that kind of stuff. Also, I think he, they all get tired of making the same games all the time. Or make mm -hmm. the same movies all the time. You know, he wants to do other stuff. But I would try to get him. I would, because I think that would be the best trailer in history. Imagine you hear like, from Jarvis turning on. And it's like, you know, good morning, sir. And you hear Robert Downey Jr. talking. You'd be like. Then they do fog machines in the Game Awards and he steps out. Oh, Welcome, God. Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> You're ludicrous or whatever the fuck those people said to each other back and forth. Um <laughs> You're delicious. No, I didn't say delicious. No, Fantastic. No, no. Fantastic. You're breathtaking. You're breathtaking. No, you're breathtaking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Delicious yeah, yeah. would be weird. That'd be a little uncomfortable. And then they'll cut him off for Kojima. Oh, my God. <laughs> it would be amazing. Robert Downey Jr. comes out and he's like, I, I want to announce I am going to be. I and then Kojima's music starts and he just walks out. Yeah. And he's like, Robert, you know. The new it's, espionage game. The new espionage game. Yeah, let's talk about PDQ or whatever. And, you know, you're yeah, talking yeah. about his game. And you're like, Robert's just in the back going like, I'm an Oscar winner, man. Why does nobody care? Uh, superheroes are walking atomic bombs. Uh, RDJ has a farm to chill out. Yeah, you could record from there, too. Eric Bana does a full um, audio. He's done, I think it's either one or two seasons of an audio drama that he does from his house. Really? Yeah, it's great. It's supernatural. It's about it's interesting. a girl's school and like possible witches and stuff. And it's Eric Banner from Troy. Like it was a weird mix. I saw it randomly on Amazon. What's that called? Not Kindle. The other one. Amazon Prime. Where they have no, where they have the audiobooks. Amazon, not audio. Amazon. Amazon's like Google. They have fifty things like Google yeah, Drive, yeah, yeah. Google. But anyway, it was Amazon's uh, service, and he's on mm -hmm. it. He does his own show. Let's see. Once you watch the boys, it's hard to look at superheroes in the same way. Really? Do you think that? Because I've watched, if you watch The Boys, the TV show The Boys, are, do you find looking at superheroes differently? Um, I don't. I just no, find that a different type of, a different show. Yeah, that's just, I don't really it's like Watch Dogs or something, right? Like it's more, it's dark, like Invincible as well, where the, yeah. the heroes aren't all that. Yeah, no, yeah for I'm, some I, reason, I, it doesn't like really me. stop me from, or I don't really look at superheroes differently. I don't know why. Huh. Yeah. I guess it could be. Oh, Amazon Audible. Thank you, everybody. Audible. I knew we'd get there. SBZ says Hawkeye. What did I call him? Deadshot? Dumbass? You, you, broken, broken Arrow. arrow. Broken Arrow is a way better name. <laughs> yeah. What else do we have, man? Hmm. My back is so bad right now. Damn. Son of a bitch. Damn. Dude, I went, no lie, went to sit down on my couch, and we have a divider in the couch, the recliner couch. I went to yeah. sit down like a jackass. I was skipping. I don't know why, but I was skipping with my dogs and I went to sit down and my fucking back caught on the recliner oh, part and it tweaked my oh. back sideways as because I was trying to sit in the chair, but I went a little too far. And man, it the crack that it, it emitted from my back sounded like a two by four being broken. And I was all, yeah, that's going to be bad. And it was fine. And then the next morning I woke up and I'm like, OK, well, it's fucked. I, I had gotta... for, for three days straight, I think on. The first day I slept wrong on my back, 
and for three days straight straight my upper right hand side my upper right back was just killing stoked me up. And there was nothing yeah it always feels like i could crack it but not really and it was, it was painful i was also playing a lot of games on the legion and looking down so the back of my oh, neck yeah. muscles were stretched and i woke up with the worst migraine and after friday's podcast i was supposed to do some stuff and i was just sit when we got done with the podcast i turned everything off I went to get something to eat and I came back and it it just had it just out of the blue was like bump 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 I was like ah oh. you know rub down as much as you can which is weird because I've always had a bad back so it's not really an age thing I've had a bad back since 18 but it always sounds like it's getting old but it's really just being stupid I I knew I was doing it I was watching a show Resident Alien and I was playing Legion and I was doing this it was just like I was doing <laughs> neck lifts for like 4 hours I knew I, I knew That's I was going to hurt myself um SBZ says Hawkeye should have called himself Broken Arrow in in games. Does anybody have any questions for the chat or questions for the podcast? I'm trying to think, we didn't. This week was a little, it was a little tepid. It was a little slow. Yeah, we have like a lot a, of games coming out next week. Yeah, most of the things were about Fallout TV show. Um, not a lot of new news. More layoffs, or I think uh, Take Two. I know is laying off five yeah. percent. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's that's been about it. We we got some new questions on Discord. I mean, one new question. Oh, do we? You sure? Yeah, the bug guy uh, says thoughts on the word of a next generation Xbox in twenty twenty six. Where where is that, buddy? Podcast questions. Podcast there we go. questions. The yep. bug guy says, "What's up, bug guy?" He is a uh, uh, pest eliminator, and he's given oh. me help at my house. It's <laughs> been pretty sweet, man. He's got some stories okay. too. Uh, thoughts on the word of a next generation Xbox in 2026. Uh, that sounds like a good year. Yeah, do you think next gen is going to come out 2026? PS5 Pro is coming out if in 2025. If PS5 Pro is coming out in 2025, I think 2026 is probably, or the end of 2025 might be the best bet for a next gen. And Damn, next gen really? might look so different that I just, I mean, we just don't know what it will look like and who it'll be. I mean, Microsoft in their leaked documents talked about ARM a lot and looking at possibly going away. You know, there's, and then at their new Windows event, I guess, they have an entire section lauded off uh, to talk about Windows coming to ARM and or, or improvements on it or something. There was something big there that people were like, whoa, that's interesting that they're talking about that. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft has stated pretty clo cl you know, clear they they're looking at different kinds of things like handhelds and stuff. I don't know what it'll look like. I'm excited for mm -hmm. it. I'm uh, PS5 Pro a little less excited for, it, but that's because when I got the PS4 Pro, I really did think okay, it did improve FPS for some games, not all games, unfortunately, but it improved some stuff. It improved quality, that kind of thing. But um, I wasn't aware how little it sold. Until just recently when people were breaking down the numbers and how small the segment is for the pro versions of these things. And that's why the pro doesn't interest me as much. It interests me, but more in, hey, what are you planning on doing? The new gen do, and, and, like, I am excited to see where they go with those, you know, what we get, what form factor. Battery in the controllers. Cheaper yeah. controllers. That'll never happen. Man. Not imagine dollars controllers. Mm, yeah. Or imagine an Elite for 79 not 100 and. What are they? Oh, 59? Yeah, those are way too expensive, man. Yeah. They're unrealistically expensive. Yeah. Like that's the one of the places where both Sony and Microsoft people bitch about the other stuff, or they you know, they'll be like, Oh, they're raising the price of live by a dollar or something like that. And I'm like, dude, if there's anything that's staring you in the face, it's the price of the controllers. I yeah. mean, what the shit? Especially when you have the third party guys who are releasing better, more long lasting controllers for half the price. For cheaper. Yeah. yeah, with back paddles and fucking interchangeable. Have you seen the ones that have the interchangeable sticks? You pull a stick yeah. out, you can put buttons on the front to do a you fighter. Can put weights where, in. Dude, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know about, I saw that too, like put weights in. I think that's just because what? It makes you feel like it's more sturdy? Or is it for, like it's like heavier, which which means it's a kind of better oh, build quality. If, and maybe know, button presses better. don't move it as much. If say, I don't know. I don't know oh, where yeah, that logic know, comes for that. But yeah, yeah there's yeah, some yeah. there's some crazy stuff there that's pretty cool. But my thoughts mm -hmm. on it, 2026 seems pretty. Yeah, that seems fair. Mojo says, wondering if anyone takes into consideration of where a game developer is and for, for and from when it comes to a purchase. For instance, I personally won't buy a game from any communist country such as China or Russia as the Chinese government takes 25% of any Chinese company's revenue. Therefore, if you buy from those regions, you technically would be giving money to uh, communism. I do understand you can uh, only do so much when it comes to electronics, where so much of our tech comes from China. Thank you. 
I was going to go there, but that's that yeah. is true. Also, if they get 25%, if the company still gets 75%, then somebody's still getting paid. But um yeah, I know a lot of people who are like that, man. I know a lot of people who look at every every single thing a company's ever done and what's anything that's on social media and they decide it's very few people I know, but there are some people like that. Yeah, uh, well, like I know this guy worked in this company which mm -hmm. had this owner who scammed this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or where just the company, you know, Samsung suicide net story and stuff like that, where you're like, damn, you know. Well, it wasn't Samsung. I I, never, I should take that back. It was the uh, one of the yeah. production companies over there. What I don't think I've ever boycotted anything because I, I can't be consistent with it. Because if I boycott something, I feel like I have to boycott everything. <laughs> you feel like, like I, I can't to boycott everything. buy a phone or Amazon because then I, w w w I'd be like, okay, well, this company's bad because of this practice. And then there's always worse, right? It's like, oh, my clothes yeah. were made by children and my phone. And I mean, you know technically, I mean? he probably to... posted from a device made in China. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I can't like begin to wrap my head around where I would even start. I I, I couldn't. A lot of uh, c consumer stuff is just goes back a long way. It goes up the the chain to to something bad or someone that did something bad or, you know what I mean. So I, I don't think know, do, Foxconn. Yeah, do boycotts. Thanks. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Do boycotts work? I'm thinking about boycotts work. I, I mean, I know because of the Israel stuff, uh, Starbucks went down like thirty percent, forty percent, and and and. Uh, stock revenue what did but what did no. subway do in israel i don't know some people speculate that they send money to israel or some shit like that but I, I oh haven't seen gotcha oh it. interesting i you know there's no, a lot I of the, I've heard stuff. there's like the mudfish thing right with atomic heart where yeah that's what i was sort of thinking i was Russia. wondering if he was getting to stalker and mudfish and all that you know those games from the that particular yeah. and area and then there's people down the line who work in those companies that have nothing to do with anything and it's just you know there's there's so much to it. You're well, not can hiding I, only one person versus someone else. I mean, technically, also, if we wanted to go that far, you would never buy a Western game, ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ever. You wouldn't buy. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we if we itemized every, you know, there's there's always somebody or something that's happened in a Western company too everywhere. So I do get the idea of the overarching uh, society though. Simage yeah. says, regarding the Legion Go, I love the Switch detachable Joy-Cons because I can prop up on a treadmill and walk as you normally would without the controls disconnecting. Alternatively, I've had other controllers disconnect when line of sight breaks, This uh, making this use case impossible. Did you test out moving your arms, breaking line of sight with the controllers to see if the treadmill bike would be possible? This is old, very old. That's a good question, but can I point something out? If the line of sight so the screen is gone. What are you playing that doesn't require you to look at the screen? If so if I a... take my Legion controller off and walk out of the room, what am I playing if I'm out there? Maybe like a sound game where you don't need... Maybe a sound... A screen. But then that also... Maybe yeah, if you're like a god gamer you know oh yeah uh, guys it, uh, I, yeah if you're a and... dark souls player you know who who's watching somebody who's reviewing a game you've never played and you're saying I could, uh, i've already beat the game with just the a button maybe yeah, maybe that's for you like a challenge i don't know i don't know what that means i think he just maybe means test it uh for usability i can certainly say that if it's five or six feet in front of you and you're playing it it works that is yeah. as much as i can say that's a good it's a good question but sorry uh, i didn't get to that we move those questions to a completely different uh, part of the Discord, and I didn't, I didn't, uh, didn't hit on it. I apologize. It's a unique question. Cloud Cutter says, "What's your ideal proportions for your first Thanksgiving plate? Do you use cranberry sauce?" Uh, cranberry. I do use cranberry sauce, uh, and portions, a shit ton of stuffing, and some turkey, and a bunch of cranberry sauce. I will say this. I know there's heathens out there, disrespectable humans that are right on my moral list of not buying anything from or eating any of their food who do ham during Thanksgiving. And I don't oh, know what yeah, kind like... of heathen does ham during Thanksgiving, yeah. but get out. Like, yeah. I want to, I mean, there's been times where my dad will be all, okay, we're going to make roast beef, which my dad's a good cook. He's sort of taken that on as he retired. Like, I'm going to do roast That's beef cool. and ham, and I'm like, and turkey? Because... Dude, that's just you my thing. Turkey, I, don't, man. 
I don't eat turkey any other time of the year. So to me, having the one day where I mean, I really don't eat turkey. I eat chicken. Yeah, who eats all the time? Like, do I don't know. Ever you eat know, turkey it, normally. Other maybe than a big drumstick, like, like the... if you're like the Rock, right? And you're clubbing yeah. people over the head, and then you're eating your drumstick yeah, like yeah, a caveman. Yeah, yeah. Those things other are huge. Usually... Deli meat. Like the oh, deli dude, meat yeah, not even thing. the deli meat. Yeah, D like dude, yeah, if yeah. you go to Subway and they say, "Well, turkey sandwich at Subway, maybe," but I no, I still get chicken. I, 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 I like. Oh, you still uh, got chicken. I still get chicken. Yeah, chicken's got yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a different taste to it. Turkey like a cold cut. Good. Ooh, but, or a mm -hmm. club sandwich. Mm, damn. Yeah, that's too. Man, damn. I was trying to think. Speaking of Subway, we'll do a random advertisement. Yeah. Apparently, but sure. When I go there, I always get like the meatball one. Or meatball I get, marinara. Yep. Yeah. Steak and, and cheese. It's steak and cheese is good. The meatball one's a little messy, and I'm I'm thick. I'm very finicky about dirty food, like food getting probably because of the beard and stuff, but. I try to be careful, you know, that you don't look like. <laughs> yeah, the meatball marinara also can get yeah. rowdy. Yeah, so I have to do the thing where I eat with my head down so that, like, yeah, everything yeah. that falls. But that, <laughs> those are good, yeah. Those are definitely good. Yeah. Uh, but turkey is, for, for Thanksgiving, man, turkey is like, I mean, yeah. And stuffing. I don't eat stuffing ever. Ever. Really? It's Thanksgiving. Was... It's Thanksgiving. Oh, Thanksgiving I mean, only. Yeah, yeah but yeah, do yeah. you, I mean. And a I couple days around it. Like after it. Well, yeah, know, I mean, let's be honest. I should say Thanksgiving is like a seven day Week. period of re yeah, leftovers yeah, yeah. and pre overs, pre unders, pre unders and leftovers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah Where definitely. bags of uh, bags of stuffing, you just cook that. Yeah. Dude, and I want the shit stuffing. The stuff that's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I know this sounds bad, but the kind that's in the box that's like, I don't want it shoved in the bird. I've had that, and I get why people yeah, like yeah. the savory, but it's a little too whatever for me. I want the yeah, cheap yeah. ass. You yeah. know, dehydrated. You pour water and it goes like a mo like so a video good. game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and you yeah. eat that, and oh, dude, it's and it's so bad. It feels like top ramen with the amount of salt. You know. Yeah. I want the next day to show up and look like my jaws square because I have so much water <laughs> retention, right? Where you just like yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. you're t you're oh, dude, it's so good, so good. So cranberry good, sauce man. is ridiculous. I don't like that. I like cranberry, cranberry sauce. sauce. You do, I and you put it on food. Stuffing. You put it on the food, or you just like put it on the side, and then I put it on the stuffing. Or on the side, usually yeah, on the side, and then, and then I dip, scoop it up with it. Really? So, inner, like, yeah, yeah like with uh, the spoonful would be stuffing and cranberry sauce at least, and maybe some turkey, all in huh. one bite. Yeah, I don't. We don't. I don't even think we have it. We do have this weird thing, which is like a whipped, some uh, almost like whipped cream or a cream, and then they put like um, mm. raisins and uh, or not raisins, sorry, cranberries and stuff in it. I don't know what it is. It's like a mini dessert. You don't take much because if you did, you'd be shitting yourself for a month. It's just <laughs> this little, and I don't know if that's even, maybe that's not even a real thing. My family just likes it, but that's the only real sweet stuff we have is that the rest of the stuff is savory and salty and bad Do you for like, you. Uh, have you ever tried raisins with rice, like raisins and savory, like rice and chicken, but with some raisins in there? I don't eat it often, but I've absolutely had it. Yeah, absolutely I had it. That. And then here, there's a type of... Maybe it's a brown rice, but there's a rice that I've seen people have, like raisins or cranberries in it, probably for that tart with the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's like honestly, rice here. Dude, I like... I'm generic. I want white rice with some butter and salt and pepper. That's like my favorite mm. thing. Just like, straight like up. sticky white rice? You mean where it's gummy? No, no, no. What's sticky mean? <laughs> like, uh, like sushi sticky, but... Or like Chinese steamed rice or whatever. Bro, I'm not even that fancy. If it looks like rice... Like some vinegar in it so that it sticks. It's really good. I think I just make rice poorly because my rice sticks together a lot already okay. without adding anything. Because <laughs> okay, well, yeah. I was just thinking when I eat rice, a lot of times you could almost make a ball with it like sushi. Yeah, you yeah, could yeah, almost, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm sure I'm cooking it wrong. I just don't give a shit as long as it tastes somewhat mm. like rice has butter Or you and leave salt it out pepper. for half a day and it becomes yeah, sticky. Yeah. Yeah, where you <laughs> get that. Yeah, I definitely have had that. I definitely have had that. We don't do rice anymore ever. Uh, I, yeah. I haven't had rice in... Unless it's Chinese food, I, yeah, we I used to do rice and potatoes a lot, and then once you realize how much carbs that is, once I, you know, really looked at it, I was like, dude, this is not working out for me. Because you, yeah, man, yeah. you can gain. People will be like, oh, if you just eat potatoes well, and rice, you won't gain rice, weight. Fuck you, you. Won't. I remember in my college days where like I was out of food and all I would eat is rice for a couple of days before doing groceries, and that shit just like you eat so much of it and you might it's... get full for like half an hour and yes. then you're hungry again dude when you hear those people saying they eat six or seven meals as a movie star and they get tired of eating i would just say eat a little rice because apparently rice just makes you hungry yeah. you know yeah it's um, like reading McDonald's some of the stuff sandwich. here ham is only better than uh, ham is only better than spam that about it hey i sort of fried spam 
Yeah, whatever. I sort of like fried spam. Uh, I don't know why we don't do these types of meals more often. Yeah, that would be cool if you had more. Go- if I was closer to my parents, I'd do a, a more often, I think. Yeah. Um, you don't need vinegar. You could also pressure cook it much different than steamed, and the grain matters as well. Interesting. I would never pressure cook rice. Never SBZ says don't add too much water then, ACG. Water to what? To the rice. Because you say it's sticky? I like it that way. What's he fucking talking about? I want it that way. If it was all separated, that's uh, still good. It's like but, basmati. You know, like basmati rice. Yeah, it's exactly like basmati. I don't know what you're talking about. Is that a certain basmati, type of rice? It's like longer rice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Uh, do other places have pink sauce with Chinese food? Pink sauce with Chinese food? Or is that an Oregon thing? I live in Oregon, and I don't know if that's pink a thing. Pink sauce as in sweet and sour? Sweet or... and sour, maybe? Sweet and or pink sauce sure. as in, like, Thousand Island? Oh, God, can you imagine that? A Thousand Island with <laughs> I can't. I, Chinese I, the thought food? Of Thousand Island makes me gag because once when we were kids, me and my friend wanted butter popcorn, but we didn't know how to do that. So we basically just had a bunch of popcorn and mixed it in with Thousand Island. And I like clearly remember his hand mixing the popcorn with the Thousand Island. And it's so gooey and disgusting. And uh, since then, I couldn't. Uh, Thousand Island is uh, on my no-no list. I don't, I don't have much food on my no-no list. I, I'm not a picky eater, but Thousand Island is on there. Yeah, That sounds absolutely disgusting, man. I do yeah, know, though, bad. that I've seen somebody making a food that was on a list of things I liked. And then you see it being made. And you're like, well, yeah. Not anymore. We made sausages a bunch of time out of deer and all this stuff and cow shit one time at my uncle's. And I remember just going like, <laughs> man, I, I hope I can ignore, you know, because occasionally a bone would get in there. You know, this is obviously yeah. not perfect sausage making. This is a guy at his house. He's killed a deer or he's, you know, yeah, they've yeah. slaughtered a cow. And <clears throat> like, I don't know if it was like a toenail or a bone or something, but it was just like, oh, that shit just, oh yeah. man. Or there's st- like a hair strand in, in, in oh, there. Oh, dude, worst and... thing ever, man. Worst thing ever. Hair is um, the one thing that if I get it in food or anything, it's probably, I, it's probably it's done over. for the night. Yeah. I still yeah, yeah. remember. Uh, it was Brooklyn Nine Nine, I think, when the girl is talking about how low rent a restaurant is, and she she says, "I broke a tooth on a tooth," and I fucking almost gagged when she said it i was like that is so revolting man broke a tooth on another tooth oh Oh my god that's (laughs) That's wrong man uh let's see st born says most chinese restaurants use steamed rice and have jasmine rice as well yeah jasmine rice ain't too bad it's got a little smell to it that i love uh, the egg fried rice man oh yeah and you can make that at home man like you can make that so easy that kind of stuff is great all the time yeah oregon fresh who's claiming all of his Chinese restaurants have it. I don't know what that means. Do you yeah, own them? Pink, no. He's saying all of pink them. Pink sauce in Chinese restaurants. Yeah. That's I agree weird. with you. There's probably something there. I don't go to a lot of them. I'm usually pretty laid back in what I get. Like for lunch today, I will have a slice of cheese and a steak that will be lightly salted and that's it. What are you going to have? Yeah. Well, Arabic food called Mbukhiya. What is it? It's a it's a it's a certain plant called Jews mallow, and you you cook it with rice and chicken, but I'm not having rice because I'm on keto again. Uh, or but I'm also gonna have this eggplant eggplant dish, which is like uh, like beef. You don't like eggplants, man? It's so good. not a it's like not healthy. a big fan. Yeah, the texture look, puts me off, yeah. but it's fine. The texture what? is weird. Uh, yeah, that with beef and onion, and mm. it's like a little. Uh, like little beef burgers with eggplant and and onion and tomato, so good. To it's swing not, this it's, back, it's, it's a food I created. To swing this back to games, um, there was a mod yes. I saw in Starfield <laughs> where somebody threw a bunch of shit together, a uh, really good textures for the food in that game, and I actually thought they looked good already, like the little crunchables, the little vacuum packed snacks you get in Starfield. I actually really liked a lot of the food in Starfield. I found myself like looking around once I saw this mod, but um. I was surprised how many games are modding their food. There are people who that's their thing is to go into a game. And if the game has food items that are laying around or what have you, that's the first thing they mod is. Man, I, I, I think for my mod list for Starfield, Starfield towards the end, I did that. But with Starfield, um, Fallout, Skyrim, and even Sp- Cyberpunk, I downloaded the individual fucking 4k 8k textures of every single food item the bread oh, right. the cheese 
the you know all they have the mesh and all that shit man it was it was awesome yeah i like it. i don't know there's something about these tiny objects just seeing them that's res. where yakuza nailed it man beyond yeah, belief yeah. going into a restaurant yeah, yeah, in yakuza yeah. or a, one of the stores convenience stores was mind-blowing the level of detail they had in that game yeah that was yeah. oh man just walking in and being like oh my god every little restaurant item appears like a real thing you know it's just yeah, it was so I good stuff man let me look at any further news that we have. There hasn't been a lot, man. Steam, so Steam World Heist 2's official trailer. So did that come out today? Or is it just Which the one? trailer? Steam World Heist 2. Let's see. Yeah, just a reveal trailer. Uh, five hours ago, Steam page. Uh, it's coming out on the on August 8th. It's from the creators of SteamWorld Dig 2 and SteamWorld Heist comes SteamWorld Heist 2. What are these SteamWorld games, dude? I've never played them. I did SteamWorld. I've done two. SteamWorld Heist and... Or are there this only looks two? Like Have I done both? Worms. Do you remember Worms? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is actually a little bit how they feel to me as well. They're good. I, I yeah. really like them. Yeah, they're good. I don't know what it is about the overarching fiction, though, of SteamWorld or anything. Yeah. I think that's just more along the graphics. But I don't remember enough about the story to know if maybe they were connected in some way, which they might have been. Mm -hmm. Dave the Diver got a launch trailer for PS5 and PS4, nice. which Good I thought game. it was out. Was that an Xbox exclusive? P I don't know. It's out on PC. It's been out on PC mm -hmm. for a while. Um, I'm I not thought. sure if it's out on console as well, but it's a really great game. And it plays really... Uh, I think it plays better with controller. The game plays better with the controller, so I, is it really only a... Let me see. And then the other bit, while you look at that, is Nixies says that they're waiting on FSR 3.1 before adding AMD's frame generation to Horizon Forbidden West because it wants the latest and greatest before integrating it. That's awesome, man, integrating that they're doing it. They're going to wait until 3.1 before adding AMD's version of Liquid Frames or whatever. into Not Liquid Frames, AMD's version of FSR that adds frame gen to Forbidden West before mm. they do it. Because they want it to be Very the cool. best and greatest, they say. You know, it's, uh, as a side note for, for Horizon, we were talking about this in earlier podcasts and this, how uh, people handle sequels like in FF7 Rebirth. You kind of had to relearn all the abilities you learned already. Yeah. Horizon did it really well man all the all the abilities i learned in the first horizon were just ingrained in the game as just a lot stuff of it was to... yeah they did a good like job 90 percent of it man like you could do the the assassins you could repair the mount you can do the slowdown like everything was already there which was really awesome you never see that yeah so often you get those games where you're just like why did why did everybody forget every move you yeah. know, why is everybody yeah, absolutely like in sucked ff7 today? Yeah, where you had to learn the moves from all the different weapons, and then you just got the same ones again for the most part. I think that's just a thing where they they're hard for them to tell a story, but with having a, a escalating protagonist, you know, a protagonist that like, yeah, can you yeah. imagine Laura Croft how power she, you know, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you know, eighty five skills and shit like that. It's, they just have to keep <laughs> they yeah, they yeah. have to keep paring it down, or you add more difficult enemies, you know, that kind of thing. Last yeah. up, let's go with. Uh, that's actually it. Wow, oh, that's a short gaming, one today. Gaming, yeah, it is. Gaming guitar. Alejandro says, "What's the best comment you've ever received that actually got to you in a positive way?" We'll say in life. What's the best? What's the best comment in life you've ever got? It can be YouTube when you were streaming, or it can, or, or doing your Twitch, or it can just be a friend saying something. What's the best? Do you remember something somebody said to you, and you were like? Damn, guys don't get much compliments. Man. Imagine we got as many compliments as women. We'd be flying high. Um, yeah, that is true. Best comment? It's, it's going to be something cheesy, like I'm proud of you or something. Well, from, I mean, it depends on who it's said from. My dad, you know? obviously. Um, I mean, sexually, there are some... That's Good what I was going to go with, but I'm not going to. But that was, I was I'm like, not, oh, that, because I think that hits a person, girl or guy yeah, or yeah, whatever, yeah. it hits them because it, 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 it's intimate. So it hits it a, a higher, I think, a higher level overall. But yeah, it makes me feel good about myself, you know. Just, well, yeah, uh, I mean, it's the same way as like if you help somebody out, they say, you really helped me out. If you made them happier, feel good, then yeah. that also if makes you, you happy. I think you have like, 
small like parts to you, but then you're, you're, you're reminded that it's think. bigger than average. Um, what's a what's like a most positive? Anybody in chat have a positive com comment? Like something? Robert um, says, Carrick, have you gone back to Starfield? Uh, yes, I played it this morning. Played it last night. Played it the day before. I, played it I don't the day think before. you ever stopped. Like I've seen you stream it on Discord or play it on Discord while in voice yeah. chat a lot. A lot I've of been time. really interested in modding it and seeing you, what you secretly what people play are games. Doing. You're just like playing. Random oh yeah, you'll stuff. see. Yeah, and and because I don't <laughs> sleep much, it'll be three a.m. and somebody's like, "Dude, do you mean for this to be uh, visible?" Because they'll see it yeah. in my. They'll be like, "Are you reviewing something?" Sometimes, like, no, dude. Just... Like we'd be talking podcasts or just in general in chat, and you'd be like, "Yeah, so I've been playing this and this and that," and I'm like, "When? Where? What?" And you're yeah. reviewing all these. What are you? How? When? I like when games, are you man. The... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You do. Oh, that will bring me to yeah. to something. <clears throat> Swallow that gum weird. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So. I have been seeing a lot of YouTubers talking about burnout and we've talked about it before many times in here. But one thing that did catch me by surprise is I saw somebody Jack, Jack septic. I, I guess recently, or the news hit recently in my news. So it could be an older comment, but he said something like, well, I feel like I only have two years left. YouTube doesn't seem to want me. And I got to tell you something, man. And I think this is why I'm lucky. I've never thought YouTube wanted me it at all. That's because a good turn. I didn't know I, I was gonna. Take. I have been hit so many times before anybody else. That's how I got to know a lot of people, like Total Biscuit, who helped me out and stuff like that. So I've so that return from them, other than teasing it and consistently being like, like our last podcast was demonetized instantly, and I was like, we said, in fact, our last podcast on Friday was really tame, and so I was mad. I was like, what the shit? So you know, got a hold of YouTube and they fixed it, but I was sort of sad to see that. I mean, I get where he's coming. I get where he's coming from, but at the same time, I don't. I don't give a shit if YouTube wants me. Like if somebody, Maybe they even just if they never liked you because no sponsors. No, no, I don't think it was that. I think it was. I, I have no clue what it was, but um, I, a lot of cussing, I'm sure. But um, I, I was. It was sort of bummed me out to see because I get where he's coming from for sure. But then I also was thinking to myself. I bet you I would think the way he does if I did what he does, because here's the thing that's hugely different between like him and me. He's streaming a game for six hours while people are talking to him while he's in there. And it's six solid hours of unbreaking, like back and forth, oh, right? Yeah. Where mine is the podcasts are friends. And then the reviews are 15 minutes of 60 hours. And so I get where streamers in particular, the long-term streamers, the, what are they like, like comedy streamers where that's their, cause he's definitely high like energy. Their personality. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could definitely see. And then that also puts you out there in a weird way, psychically, you know, or mm -hmm. psychologically, not so well, it could be psychic, but psychologically. And so I could definitely see him feeling like almost feeling like he is not wanted if they're not doing as well, or if he has to work because in a weird way, it's him more than it's me. I mean, yeah, I'll joke and everything. There's my stuff out there, but man, I was watching some of his stuff, you know, five, five hours or whatever. I'm like, Ooh, that's even psychologically to the viewers as well. Because if you're streaming a lot of your life, like six hours a day, I feel like they'd be more attached to you on a, yeah. on, a on a level where you don't want it to happen. You know what I mean? Like kind of, uh, what do you, what do you call it? When you're super attached to your life that they're trying to dictate what you do. And right. They'd be disappointed if you don't show up one day and, uh, yeah, there's a lot of yeah. pressure there. And and yeah. the thing is, is they all start hot and heavy. And those are the ones that I've been seeing drop off. And I've even seen people who are successful. You start to see less and less stuff coming from them. Yeah. And it's because, you know, I mean, there is a comfort level there. There's a desire to not. I just like games to get back to how much I play. If that goes away, you will see mm -hmm. me like play less games. There's been times yeah. for sure where we've been talking and. Like, I haven't really played much, you know, because I was doing chat GPT. But it's always tech. I like tech. I think it's always yeah, tech. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. always something to do. Even if it's Dungeon & Dragons, I'm messing around and trying or to build Ableton a TV or into. Or able to, yeah. Music stuff yeah, is awesome. Yeah. Even though I got to say, if I was a musician right now, yeah, I would be, be, I'd, I'd yeah. be like, oh, damn, I got to get my stuff out ASAP. Because, yep. it, you know, Artists. you may not be able to be found in a month as things become more prevalent. Um, but we were talking about something parasocial prior to that. Parasocial is the word. So oh, thanks, parasocial, Chad. yeah. So what's the, yeah, what's the positive, what's a positive comment? Back to that. I, I don't want to use YouTube because like, I don't, we I love everybody really listening. One. But this, 
on the what podcast was that? that was probably the best comment I've received too. Like they included the other podcast hosts in it, where it's this guy that was, uh, I think he had cancer and he was. Oh yeah, he, yeah. Watching the podcast. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. it's that's yeah that's awesome to hear for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but I would say that yeah yeah that's pretty cool to hear. It the, I'm not that was true. I know that person. Like that is for sure. But um, sometimes you don't know what's real coming out. You don't know what's real going in. So the YouTube one is always a little difficult because also the person who says they love you will hate you tomorrow if they don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah if they yeah. don't. If they don't agree with something. I used to trust you, but you like a game. I think that for some reason you shouldn't like. I hate you. Um, Brand Brandon Martin, $2 Super Chat, playing Division 2 again. Such a fantastic game. Yeah, that is oh, man, a game. Last Division week two. we played about four hours of uh, Division 1. And then everybody yeah. else jumped to Division Two, and it was crazy to hear him talking about it. It's like, dude, this game is still rocking. Man. It's awesome, man. And it I, really I, is. I got to end game uh, the last time I played. I got to end game, and I never have before. And there's so much stuff to do. There's like, there's roguelike dungeons. There's a huge like 100 floor tower. There's a bunch of raids and dungeons, and you know, it's really, really, it's really fun. And a lot of stuff to do in the world, and then you got the dark zone. That game is great. It's really cool. I saw uh, people last night. Uh, it was Void and Jay. No, sorry, Void and Dev Guy were playing um, Returnal. And they were returning yeah. to that co-op, and that that looked like a fun game to do in co-op. It looks like it might be more manageable in co-op. I felt that Very their fun. gameplay wasn't like. I'm not saying they weren't experts, but it looked like it wasn't. It didn't do that thing where it's like twice as hard. At least from what I saw of them playing it, you know. And now with all the add-ons, because they had the tower. Um, there was something else they is, were doing uh, that I don't it think does came. scale. If you're two people, it does scale as well. But does it scale two, two times? Because it didn't seem like it was. Oh, I don't know. No, probably not two times, no. But, and but I don't think it was scaling health, with two times the amount of shots coming in, because that would be ridiculous. <laughs> oh, that would be bullet hell extreme. You'd just be able to yeah, walk yeah. across the laser beams at that point. They would actually, yes, I know lasers don't have weight. Somebody's going to bitch about that. Uh, let's see. No, what that else? game is a roller coaster ride uh, in co-op. It's fun oh, because a yeah. lot of the boss fights are like, "Whoa, what's happening?" And oh my god, you know, for the first time, I would, I would, I would consider playing co-op for the first. That's how I played the first playthrough. Was fully co-op for me, and uh, it was awesome. Returnal's a good game, man. Returnal's like so good, yeah. one of the games I want to see a sequel of. One of the few yes. games where I sit back and I'm like, you know what, man, I you really want to play only, that. It's like the only AAA roguelike. Rogue hell. Made third person shooter that there is yeah <laughs> anti vampire survivors opposite yeah they were in the underwater level they were doing something and they were mm -hmm. jumping around and i gotta admit man i didn't realize the game had been that long ago because i couldn't even remember that level until i saw the bubbles come out and i was like oh okay i do remember being stunned by you know some of the graphical fixes because that's the other thing flying can... guys mm -hmm. yeah yeah that Overall, I just think that would be cool to see a sequel to that because there's a lot of stuff you could do with the enemies. I don't know if the story would be a sequel because, yeah, you know, be, no, uh, you could do it. They had interesting lore as well. Like they had that's what I mean. World there. Yeah, the yeah. Inter it was super. You would almost want to switch it up though if you did a sequel because yes. it feels like that lore. I was sort of happy with the what I got out of. There was a little mystery left for sure. Yeah, but um, and there was a lot of stuff that I probably didn't read because there were some times where you could. I remember you go down that thing. You can either go down here or go to the right and go into the house. And the first time you go to the house, you can't go in. Then later you can go in. You see a little bit more cutscene each time. And I thought that was a cool way of playing it. Or a cool, sorry, a cool way of displaying the story from the developer. They did a good job of storytelling in that game. Especially yeah, for yeah, a bullet the way help. it was implemented, the house, right? Yeah. Dude, the hardest boss for me in that game, I shit you not, I don't know why, is it's uh, on the second level, the desert guy who... Oh, is high. Goes, like flies down. I don't yeah, know yeah, yeah. what it was about him, man. But I was just like, "What the shit?" Yeah, I think I'm the only one who says that. I've heard other people say, like, you know, third or fourth. Most nobody brings up the end as being the hardest. They br there's different scattered ones. But I, I don't have know to if agree I agree with you. I think I think the second one is probably it just ruined I, me, man. I, I, the third I, wasn't. Uh, no, the I mean, third wasn't. And the first was a little confusing, but that's I hadn't learned that if you. What is it in that game? If you don't grab the upgrades, then the when you do get them, they'll be leveled up with you. They'll be, the the guns and stuff will be leveled up. Remember, isn't oh, that yeah, how yeah, it yeah, goes? Yeah, yeah. yeah, and yeah, I yeah. was grabbing yeah. every weapon, so I had like low level weapons. And once I realized that, it was like just try to make it out alive, and then grab a couple of those last weapons. And then when you face the boss, that'll all be leveled up. And 
it was much easier yeah. at that point. My, my favorite boss from that is still the dude on the organs, the fourth boss. Fourth. He's not too hard. It's What's just the an world? amazing spectacle. What's the fourth world? It's uh, the first Arboreal? one revamped, kind of. It was like uh, it was like after some time has passed. From it was the first, the first one revamped. Yeah, it was like the, it looked like the first region, but it was more brownish from mm. what I remember. But I always had this path where you go into like a central point, you drop down, and then you have to. You, uh, then there's like two paths you can go to, and then the boss is like next to that central area, so you can skip everything and go to the boss, or you can go up and explore those two. Two. You large know what's areas. weird, dude. Like, to not to, I look at this Division Two post again, mm -hmm. and it's a service game, right? Yeah. And I saw that news that they said seventy percent of developers are worried about the uh, service game's future. Admittedly, that was a weird article because when you read it, actually, only thirty are are very worried. The rest are just like concerned about a future. With it, it was sort of clickbait, but. I hope I don't I'm not going to say I hope they some don't go away mm -hmm. but I'm wondering what a division would look like that wasn't a service game because I also like the updates division does. So I guess what would it look like? You could play it offline, right? That means it's not service. So you could play it offline. You play single player division 2. So if division 2 wasn't service, you would just log in if you wanted to download the DLC and only the multiplayer would require online. They do it like Remnant, right? A little bit like Remnant. Yeah, because Remnant allows off offline, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. And is Remnant 2 a different save game? Man, see, that's been a while, man. Yeah, you can Remnant... have multiple characters. But but yeah. what I'm saying is, is the single-player save game separate from the multiplayer? I don't think... Are they? Or are they the same? No, no, it's, a, it's, pretty, it's, it's depending on what character you use. So if you use this character and join your friend's game, you still have your character and all his inventory and all the And they do their out. story and you do their story but with them. But you can them. do it in oh, their you... campaign, yeah. And right. the way the game works, it doesn't matter here because you could just keep rolling campaigns and do different Dude, ones. Best like part. I'm yeah, telling yeah, you procedural generation awesome. when it's you, or not it. procedural, you can even call it something else. But the, the generation part of that, the seed part, is fantastic, man. And it's yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. It, that kind of stuff is... That's what causes me. I like Remnant too. I think it's one of the. I think it's one of the best shooters in years. Like truly, once yeah. you add everything together, the 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 worlds and the seed stuff. I think it is the one of the best. Um, and that one does peer to peer, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So Division Two, if it was going to be serve, if it was not going to be a service game, would also have to be peer to peer. So it didn't require a connection to a main server. That way, if the ser main servers went down, it didn't matter. I'm trying to think of what you have to remove. And then you remove the, so you you go to a home or to a base and you would see bots running around, I guess, because there's no real bots in that game that are like running around in the main. Um, when you go into a, a base in Division 2, if you notice, it's always either the guys standing there selling stuff or some dude who can't speak your language in the game. There's another player. Yeah, there's no NPCs like walking lot. around and stuff. Right, a lot, there's no right? NPCs rocking around in those spots. They are, or at least not many. I, you know, in the main world, they're certainly walking around. So that, so, so that would be all removed, and then the DLCs would just be purchasable, downloadable, and then you would have to have the identical DLC as somebody else. So Division Two could do it. Division Two could be, uh, could be a, not a service game. I don't mind it being a yeah. service game. I just uh, like the like. It's always better, in my opinion, to be able to play games offline if you if you don't want to play with others. I think uh, to avoid server issues, you know, and uh, and just not I'm have telling to do you that. straight up, man. They need from now on every developer. You make a game, and if you're going to require any online component, you have to build into your development the plan for releasing the server structure to. Gamers, even if your server structure is 75 cloud servers doing one huge world, at the very minimum, you've got it because who knows what would happen in the future? You know, maybe some yeah. quantum computing or something. Have it planned and be like, all right, you know, like the crew, uh, remove, you know, just not being purchasable and playable. It's like, put the server out there. I don't know what the servers require on that game though, because it is a oh, oh, huge world. Yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming know. all the, the AI is server side. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't like them, but 
there's a couple games where I feel like I'm okay, not okay with it. I just like MMOs or MMO style yeah, games. Yeah, you can't That's, do MMOs offline. Yeah, yeah, you can't do MMOs offline. Imagine an MMO where it was all AI bots. You can do that. Oh, dude, no, you couldn't. The amount of processing. You, your CPU. Would dude, I just, nuts. I don't know why I even said you could, because I was like, the I just merged two yesterday. I, it took me yeah, a yeah. long time to figure out how to do all this shit from, um, what's the main website? Uh, not Talking Head. It's called, um, they have all the I, AI packages on it hugging huggy hugging face i think is what it's called oh, i don't know okay and you can they'll teach you how to merge ais you know if you want this ai that's really good at this and this ai that's really good at this and it's 238 gigs of data and like you start running it and you're all yeah that's a lot of server power that's it's going to take a while before our pcs are ready to like do those real time a separate pc running as a yeah. server yeah yeah I mean, Freelancer had that. You could, I'm pointing over here, but you could have that, uh, what was it called? Freelancer SP. You'd have it running on a different PC. And Arma allows that. Arma allows you to, like, I think I've told you, but, you know, people rent those servers out. Well, Tarkov, single player. Tarkov. Mod, you, you run a server on, on your PC. Before and then you, start you the join game. it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, see, like that your is. Your own local server. That is awesome, too, because if they're two executables, there's a chance that maybe your game will crash, but that, that server's still running or what, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Because Windows tries to make sure it doesn't crash everything. Tries. But, mm -hmm. that yeah, that would be awesome. I love the idea. So that means you can then... So you are saying if I have a Tarkov single player or whatever, I can run it on this PC. And then... And because it's it's doing what? AI and world state? So... AI, loot, loot, and uh, and your... Yeah, your world state. So, like, your hideout and, like, what you're... So I'm assuming its GPU it. doesn't have to be amazing because that was one of the things I like about some of the servers I have rented where that you don't need an amazing GPU because it's not drawing anything. It's just running mm -hmm. the server data package and it's just yeah, doing yeah. those things. And then you get and the And then graphics. you can modify awesome. everything in a JSON, you know, like the ah! spawn chances for stuff. I mean, you, you might be good at that. I I was... I'm I don't, I don't, I don't fuck with it. I want it like, like... Do you know what I do, somewhere. dude? Just like Starfield. Yeah. Starfield has Bethany Pie is what it's called. Yeah. I don't know why, but it's yeah. their editor and you open up and it... You can edit everything in Starfield, like how far away shadows draw, shit that's not in the game uh, proper. I wish all those options were in the game because there are yeah, some yeah. options there that I bet you people that I know who are playing Sky, because it also does Skyrim and Fallout, that would get better FPS and not care that mm -hmm. their shadows were, you know, drawing closer or yeah. farther away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, let's see. What are they? Uh, oh, they're. Oh, Doom Reaper repeated himself many times trying to explain that you can play offline with Remnant. Yeah, you can. You can't with Division 2, unfortunately. You jump into any other service games lately? Uh, what am I even... Am I even excited for any service game coming out? Uh, uh, Helldivers was the last one. Tamay um, says, Life beckons. Have a wonderful time. Thank you for the lovely videos, Carrick. You're welcome. And Abzi, you're talking about podcasts. And Johnny. And Reg and Silver and Go Burns and Alamine. But anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> she want to make sure everybody yeah, got a shout out. I can't think of a new live service. Uh, dude, 2023 and 24 have been mainly single player experiences. For you, you mean? And I I would agree. Right, and like I, the I, big I, ones. Yeah, well, there was Get the Fuck Out is server based, is it not? Yeah. GTFO. Um. That was sort of popular. I saw it popping up a little bit with the one that got hacked. I saw that popping up. But for or ready true, or not, yeah. ready or not, right? Some extractions, and of course, siege. Those are you know those will continue siege, forever. Uh, siege <laughs> got a huge resurgence because of a streamer or whatever. But now it's oh no it's, shit, it's it was a single streamer again. was streaming. Yeah, what? Who was it? Yeah, it's a, a streamer called Jinxy who who popped off. Who, right now, like he's he's he he went crazy. Like he went from like a thousand. To like a hundred thousand viewers now, average, um, and 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 everyone's you know back on siege because of that. I can't handle that game. That game, dude. You don't realize Ubisoft or whoever the hell the dev team that made that game. They they just they that is a game that is an insane game, dude. Like the, all the different uh you know ins and outs of the maps with the different gadgets of the different guys of the you know it's it's fucking crazy i i could it's very overwhelming and yeah you need so much time learning the maps and stuff that's why i really gravitated gravitated towards extraction because it was uh it was its own game but it still retained that gunplay from rainbow six which is which i think is a really good uh really really good gunplay 
Um, yeah, they have some. I mean, whatever scary. other complaints I have about any of their games, a, not all of them, but a lot of their, even back in the day, they've had pretty good gunplay in a lot of their games. There's, I was messing with a game called Parish that came out on the Xbox last night and mm -hmm. PlayStation, I believe, but it was a PC release a year or two ago. Um, and I was watching the people play. It's like a Doom slash Power Slave kind of game. And its gunplay is okay. But it was weird to go from that, and then I jumped into a game I'm reviewing, and I was firing the gun, and I was like, oh, this is good versus mediocre. Like, it was instantly noticeable. Instant, like, oh, yeah. you know, whether it be recoil, crawling a certain way, or or what have, you know, something there was like, oh, that's instantly noticeable. Like, Tarkov is instantly noticeable better than yeah. some, something else that might pop up, and you can sort of tell. That game, yeah, Tarkov single player definitely looked... Uh, up my alley, but uh, jumping into something like that is usually I'm usually hacking it it's for five years. Trying to, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dev guy says finals and Lethal Company both as well. Yeah, well, not only Lethal Company, but the other one that they just did. What's the other one? Not Lethal Company, but the horror one where you're a YouTuber. Oh yeah, the the not for broadcast. No, no, the uh, not for broadcast. The... Yeah, right. No, no, not that no, one. no, no. It's this not the, that. That's Sorry, the FMV game. Uh... The no content. The out of content. Content cop. No, what the hell am I content. thinking? <laughs> content. Uh, question mark. Uh, content, questionable uh, content? No, questionable content. Something uh, content. Content warning. Content warning. Dev guy says yes, thanks. Thank you, <laughs> That's a streamer game for sure. Through and through. Yeah. Yeah. That was made to take advantage of that. And they did a smart thing with the release, the free stuff, and then popped it. It was very smart. That's somebody. That's a company that knows what they're what their offering is. There's no question yeah. to what they're offering in that game. It was like, this is what we're offering. You guys, if you want to enjoy it, enjoy it. It's going to be free, which is smart as hell, you know, to take that loss up front. And 6.6 .6 million copies were given out for free. That's nuts. But they've sold 700,000, which I think is higher than they would have. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. And the finals. Yeah, I've been watching people replay the finals. Finals is one of the best, most enjoy. Solar was playing it. Um, there was somebody else. Dev, Dev guy was playing it. Some other people. It's one of the most enjoyable games to watch I've, I've seen in yeah. a long time. I've a got, shooter to watch. Shorts, I've been getting a lot of shorts of it, and they, they always look insane, what, what they do in those games. Yeah, it looks, I mean, definitely enjoyable title for free, too. The finals yeah. is, like, ridiculous when you consider that's just a free game. I mean, yes, you can do micros in it, but it's a free game. Like, mm -hmm. you're, you, you gotta, at some point, they gotta make some money. I, I have no issue with the micros either. They had a fat Elvis costume that looked awesome, alien head, a bunch of other stuff that looked great. Well, that'll be it for us. We're gonna wrap this one up. If you guys get a chance, check out the patron, join it. It helps channel. We don't do any ads. Well, ads will play but we don't do any. We don't do any sponsorships, so if you join the channel, you'll be able to join the Discord. Other than that, anything going on, Abzi, on your end before we wrap it up? Any special? Um, on Friday, I'm going to you know, build a Lego that I haven't done since I was like a kid. So I'm pretty be excited, awesome. man. I haven't done anything tactile in so, so long. I haven't done a puzzle or a jigsaw or whatever the hell. You know, everything's been digital for so long, so it's it feels cool good, experience. man, to do a Lego. Like I said, watch a show, do a Lego, just, you know, sit back. That, and then yeah. lighting kits are awesome if you want to keep it. And if you don't, chop that fucking thing up and donate it and write it okay. off on taxes. That's what I do. We donate <laughs> all, all right. of ours. Like, you That's know, cool. I keep a couple because the lighting. Hey, by the way, also uh, Tall Neck from Horizon. Very cheap. Oh, that's okay. okay. Very cheap. Yeah. yeah. And the, it's awesome. I, would, yeah. I put it together. That thing is legit. It, looks like a tall neck. How about the Millennium Falcon? Is that still like $2 million? Or? That's, yeah, that's expensive. You can get the knockoff ones, which are pretty good, but they, they're even still cheap. That thing, they're just huge, man. Yeah, they're I'm just not like mm -hmm. a huge Star Wars guy, but Horizon, yeah. I would definitely. A tall neck? Yeah. Hell yeah. Sign me up. Yeah, the tall neck is primo. It looks good. It's pretty sturdy. And then the lighting kit's like 19 bucks, and you can choose if you want to do like around the rim of the tall neck or lights going down. And yeah, mm -hmm. it's pretty sweet. Can All right, that'll like the... be it for us. Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? No, go I was just going to say the yellow climbable thing for Aloy to climb it. <laughs> so, yes, so you can tell no, it has those. climbable. It has, a, it, <laughs> it has uh, the yellow uh, little like hand grips on the neck and everything. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, did yeah. a good, by the way, the lights, that's where you put some of the lights. So it's like a lit up uh, neck on it. You know nice. what, man? I think the tall neck's the only one that exists. That would be amazing to have 
The you know, the, the, dinosaurs. The, oh, dude, yeah. I would put those together for sure. They don't have her because and... Legos always look goofy. You know, people, yeah, Lego yeah, yeah, people yeah. are always the like, mm, yeah. they always yeah, look yeah. like your cousin that shouldn't show up to family. You got you to gotta show her uh, cheek hair, whatever the hell you call that. Oh, uh, what is that? Peach fuzz. Peach, peach fuzz. fuzz. I don't think peach I ever fuzz. had peach fuzz. I think I just went nothing beard. <laughs> nothing beard. Anyway, that'll be it yeah. for us. Thank you, everybody. Have a good one. Peace out. Enjoy the rest of your